Okay. All good. Uh, welcome everyone to the January 16th planning board meeting. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, the first thing we do every January is have our brief uh, organizational meeting, basically elections. And um, the first two items are going to be by roll call. Um, to first one to elect the planning board chairman, term to expire on December 31st, 2024. I would like to remain your chairman. Um, would someone like to nominate me? I'd be happy to nominate you. Ian Thank McDonald's you. Ian McDonald's our chairman. I'll oh. second that. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, so roll call. David? Yes. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Well, you can't vote for yourself. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Uh, you'd be. Okay. Um, second, elect planning board deputy chairman, term to expire on December 31st, 2024. I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Marcus Kasich, who's been our deputy chairman for quite some time and is now experiencing the hot seat on his own. So um, I will nominate Marcus. So I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, roll call. Roll call. David. Aye. 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 Julia. Aye. Aye. Market doesn't want to do it after the election. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these were our standard vote. Uh, that first one was resolution one of 2024. The second was number two of 2024. The third of 2024 would it be appoint Catherine Ryan as interim clerk of the planning board for fiscal year 2024 at the salary established by the 2023 shelter around town budget. I make a motion to accept Catherine Ryan. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, resolution 24 of 2024 is to appoint the Rainer Group as planning board engineer for fiscal year 2024. I make a motion to accept the Rainer Group. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, resolution number five of 2024 is to appoint Essex, Heifer, and Angel as the planning board counsel for the fiscal year 2024. I make a motion to accept EHA. If I get to speak, second that. So, in favor? Aye. And number six of 2024 is to appoint the Shelter on Reporter as planning board and board's official newspaper of record for the fiscal 2024. Uh, I make a motion to accept it as shelter on reporter. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next thing is to review the minutes from December 19th, 2023. Seems like ages ago. We paid some bills. We had a public hearing for six Daniel Lord Road and three Borough Hall lot line adjustment. And um, we opened the flowers wetland permit application and adjourned it waiting for the CAC comments. Do you guys have Jay, any? I'm sorry, there's talking in the audience. If you could just... Hey, James. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry to we just go through this. Um, the Flowers Wetlands application, we opened, we adjourned it and opened it, adjourned it uh, for the CAC comments. Um, anyone have any issues, comments? All good? All good. Yeah. I make a motion to accept the December 19th, 2023 planning board minutes. Second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have three invoices. <clears throat> um, the first one, and I, I may go a little out of order because I have my own notes on my page, my own copy of the agenda. Uh, we have two invoices for the Rainer Group for December. Uh, the Rainer Group separates uh, subdivision and site plan review from wetland permit. Uh, the subdivision section of their invoice they reviewed the white subdivision, including a review of the work done to date uh, and preparing a memo for us. 
There was also some file, uh, follow up conversation with uh, the surveyor and the attorney, the White's attorney on that. That totaled five and a half hours and $907.50. I always think Joe's time is valuable, uh, well worth it. So I make, uh, well, that's part one. Part two is the wetlands applications, reviewing 58 Westmoreland Drive the, and the Michael applications and the drainage plan for 10 Cheekwood Avenue. That was seven hours and 27 and a quarter hours, totaling 1,196.25. The two together um, total $2,103.75. Um, they're all needed, necessary. And I, again, I, I say Joe's time is valuable and well worth it. So I make a motion to accept the Rainer Group's invoices for de uh, December in $2,103.75. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second invoice we have is for EHA. And it was a conversation with the planning board secretary, uh, reviewing the white memo from the uh, from, from engineering memo. Uh, attending, preparing for and attending the planning board meeting and miscellaneous conversation with the planning board secretary uh, and uh, board members. 3.9 hours, uh, totaled 1,462.50, less than municipal discount, which totaled, ended up being $1,096.87. Again, very, very helpful, well worth the uh, the time and money. So I make a motion to accept the EHA invoice for professional services rendered in December for $1,096.87. So I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> and the last is for the Times Review Media Group. These are the required uh, publications of the public hearing notice. This was done for the Michaels application and the Stitch application, totaled $86.02. I make a motion to pay the Times Review Media Group's invoice of $86.02. Second that. Second. All right. Bye. We have four resolutions in front of us. First one was for the Bloom Minor Subdivision. Uh, and we've been talking about this one for quite some time. We have a, a extension request that mentions that the Shelter on Santa Gravel will be installing an IA sanitary system in March. So they are finally moving ahead with the sanitary system, which is great. This will enable them to uh, legalize the existing house and then proceed with the health department subdivision application, which runs concurrently with ours. So um, I'm glad to hear they're moving ahead. Resolution seven of 2024 will extend their uh, requirement to submit the final minor subdivision application to July 11th of 2024. Does anyone have any questions? I do notice that the resolutions on the second page don't have the resolution numbers for 2023. Oh. Mm -hmm. We should make sure those are in there. Right. Yeah, you're right. That's uh, one of the errors that you caught on Number eight does. second and third extensions um what those numbers were do we have beth beth on board hi beth can you hear us i'm here on page two yeah. yes thank you um on the bloom extensions uh resolution number seven page two there were missing some resolution numbers from last year can we okay. can we adopt this and then infill them afterwards 
when we have the actual information in front of us? Yes, you can just fill it. You can adopt it subject to um, putting in the cor the correct um, resolution dates that are missing or resolution numbers that are missing. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So I make a motion to accept resolution number seven of 2024 for the Bloom uh, minor subdivision final subdivision application extension until July 11th, 2024, subject to in filling the correct resolution dates on page two. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The next extension resolution has to deal with SH29 Westneck LLC. We got a letter from Karen Hogue, the applicant's attorney. They are stuck trying to record the final documents with the county. The county's been very slow. And so this resolution would take them to March 1st, 2024. And we've been working, waiting long enough for this, so I think we should continue helping them out. I'm just stuck again at the county. So resolution number eight of 2020, make a motion to accept resolution eight of 2024 for SH29 Westneck LLC, which extends their application deadline to March 1st, 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Third extension resolution is for the white amended final subdivision flat, um, basically for their bond as they're putting in the roadway. Most of the work is done. Uh, they just have to put in, get Nathan Corwin to show up and put in some monuments. Um, Aaron Hogue is the attorney of record on this and reached out ask for extension request for an additional one uh, for period this would take them to march 1st of 2024 same thing they're so close to be done i think we should have passed this um, so i make a motion to accept resolution number nine of 2024 for the conditional final approval of the subdivision of nelson white state taking extending the deadline to march 1st of 2024 do i have a second i'll second all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the last resolution is uh, to approve the lot line adjustment for 6 Daniel Lord Road and 3 Burl Hall Lane LLC. We had the public hearing. Um, Last month, no one um, other than the applicant's attorney spoke to it. It all seems very straightforward and simple. Beth, is there anything we should know that is special about this uh, lot line adjustment resolution? I don't know, Beth, if we have you. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah. I had a, I had a, um, a call from the um, the applicant's attorney i had a couple one typo and then um when in the original draft when i had referenced the properties where the gore of land was it was the six yep. I think, yeah and then i i changed that the other property was an incorrect address and it was supposed to just be an adjacent property so that was the only change from the original draft board reviewed okay but other, otherwise, the resolution is very straightforward. Yes. So I make a motion to accept resolution number 10 of 2024, approving the lot line adjustment for 6 Daniel Lord Road, LLC, and 3 Borough Hall Lane, LLC. I'll All second. Right. second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Uh, and just so everyone knows, the, there is a parallel health department application that's going on, and um, this resolution allows them to proceed with the the various deeds that it need to be re and recording of those. But we will, as the planning board, not sign the final plat until we uh, receive the health department approval and the um, and then the proof of deed recording. Same as usual. We've done that before, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. We've made a mistake of not requiring mm -hmm. that yeah. in the past. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So um, we have three public hearings tonight. First one is for Flower at 10 Chiquit Avenue. Uh, we read the public notice last time, so I, I don't think it needs to be re we read, and this is a um, continuation from last month. We did receive the Conservation Advisory Council's recommendations, and they are seven. Uh, first thing is re uh, relocate all new stairs to existing footprint. Uh, they note that the bulkhead is failing and needs repair or replacement. Uh, they won submitted at meeting full size original drawings A2, 3, and A7, 9, and 10. Not exactly sure what that means, whether they were submitted or they're requesting for the submission. Number four, all concrete shall be non leaching type. Uh, number five, site visit was on 11 27 at 10 30 a.m. Ferry traffic made it difficult to visit site. All construction vehicle traffic should be coordinated with Shelter on Heights and the North Ferry operations. Homeowners shall provide all traffic control officers. Number six, roof leaders to be designed for expected four hour rain. Number seven, item 20 in wetlands application. Where does soil removed from pilings go? And they vote five zero to approve with recommendations. I believe Matt Sherman's on board representing the flower, uh, the yeah. flowers. And um, do you want to present to us? Yes, yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize for not being there in person. The, uh, uh, the, the weather got the better of my flights coming up. So unfortunately, we've got to do this by Zoom. Um, Matt, I'm gonna Matt, hold, I'm gonna, can I hold you off for one second? There's one thing I didn't do. We did absolutely. receive correspondence on this. Uh, two letters from the Shelter Island Heights Property, Property Owners Corporation. One dated January 12th of 2024 and one dated September 15th of 2023. Okay, Matt, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, no, no worries. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, again, it's Matt T. Sherman, Sherman Engineering and Consulting. I'm here um, representing the flowers. Um, the uh, uh, property owner and the design architect are also on Zoom. If there's any questions that come up that I'm not able to answer or uh, additional information that's required from either one of them, they're available to the board at, uh, uh, during the hearing. Um, I've got a quick presentation I'd like to go over with the board. Um, let's see about sharing my, um, if Christina or Catherine can get it so I could share my screen, perfect. You should be good. Yep, it's coming up now. Okay. Okay, this site, um, just to, to give you a real brief history on what's going on here, um, there's been, uh, this is down at the Yacht Club, or right next to the Yacht Club. There's uh, um, a lot of flooding down in this area. It's pretty much the lowest point in the heights. Uh, we went through the ZBA the uh, middle of last year and received uh, ZBA variances for this same project and basically the same configuration that, um, that the planning board is seeing it. Um, the, uh, the ZBA uh, uh, approved everything that is outside of the, uh, the setbacks and this property being in a double A zone in the Heights, you've got a 50 foot front yard setback, 30 foot side yard setbacks. 
And for the purposes of the rear yard, which is also the wetlands, we've got a 30 foot uh, setback there as well. Our wetland setbacks on this property coming off of Deering Harbor are 75 feet, which basically is this arc that runs right through here and encompasses the vast majority of the uh, building and uh, about two thirds of the property itself. And then you've got the 100 foot setback, which is this arc here over going closer to Cheekwood Avenue. As it currently exists, we've got 11 square feet of the house is in the eight uh, adjacent regulated area, that area between 75 feet and 100 feet from the uh, wetlands boundary. And the whole entirety of the rest of the house, the other 2,720 square feet of the rest of the house is within the vegetated buffer. Um, the, uh, uh, there's an existing deck on the water side of the house. There, it's uh, 557 square feet is that deck. And then you've got a walkway on the left-hand side, a couple of stairs down and a little walkway on the left-hand side, as well as one on the right-hand side. Those two steps and walkways together combined for 71 square feet. And what we're proposing to do, and I'll get to an elevation here so you can see how this new site plan uh, was developed, but what we're proposing to do is raise this house up. Right now it's right, right at grade. So we're gonna pick the house up about eight feet above grade. So now obviously we can't get into the house with the existing access that we have now. So what we're proposing is a series of uh, uh, stairs and landings in order to get up to get access into the house. Currently, this area right here is a uh, uh, covered front porch. Excuse me, That's Matt, gonna... Matt, can I yeah. inter interrupt you and say that Austin, um, we can't see your pointer when, you, if you're, when you're saying this area okay. or pointing something. So just so you know, so okay, good. Hold you, may have be more you have to be more descriptive, sorry. Thank you. How about now? Oh, there you go, yeah. All right, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you David. Um, okay, so this area here is the uh, front porch, uh, the current front porch. It's going to be enclosed um, into the living space of the house. And I'll show you that in a second with the uh, proposed floor plans. And in doing so, we're moving the front door over to this side, getting it further away from the wetlands and getting it so that the stairs can go out into that adjacent regulated area. The design as we've got it now to give it a little bit more curb appeal is to have the stairs going in two directions so that we're coming on both sides of the entryway. So we've got 135 square foot of new steps within the vegetated buffer. Uh, we got 61 square feet of new steps within the adjacent regulated area. That's to get access into the house itself. Um, the way the house is currently laid out as well, the garage door is here. We're gonna be moving that, uh, the entry into the, the underneath of the house for cars to the other side, 90 degrees. So coming straight up off of Cheekwood Avenue. Um, so that brings this driveway entry here. On the left-hand side of the building, we're gonna have a new electric meter that's gotta be raised up to be above flood elevations. So we're gonna need a new platform to get us up to that new uh, electric meter. That platform is gonna be about 42 square feet with the stairs and the platform. And then coming around to the back side of the house to the water side, the deck still comes out the same distance as it was. However, we're asking to put in a new set of stairs that give us access up to that deck. And then this area here that was a walkway, we're asking to put a, a lift in there so that we can get um, coming in from grade, driving in, you can go from underneath the house to where this lift is. And anybody who doesn't have the mobility to uh, get up the stairs can use the lift to come up and down into the uh, into the living area of the house. This is the basic, this is just one of the drawings that the architect has, has prepared. This is the basic layout for the elevation, the section of how the, uh, the new building is gonna be configured. Um, our existing approximate grade is at about a five foot elevation right along here. That's current as it is now, it's as it will be in the future. The uh, flood zone, because we're in a VE of a uh, VE flood zone, requires us to have the lowest horizontal structural member to be at least two feet above our base flood elevation. And here our base flood elevation is going to be at an eight. So our base flood brings us to 10. 
So that's the absolute minimum we can have for our, our flood protection to comply with FEMA flood zone regulations. We're asking to go a little bit higher than that. We're asking to go up to 12 foot three. That extra couple of feet does a few different things. Number one, it enables them to get vehicles underneath the building so they can use it as a garage. They can park underneath there and they don't have to be out in the driveway. And then the other thing it does is it gives us a factor of safety. Um, this came up at the CAC meeting. Um, it's come up on other, uh, other applications for docks and other things like that. Of raising it the absolute bare minimum just gives us enough to what we've got for today. It doesn't, if the flood zones get reevaluated in another couple of years, we could very well find ourselves in a situation where we're non compliant again. Um, so bringing it up a couple of extra feet enables us to have that double benefit, a little bit of, uh, uh, of extra safety for the building and also a usability underneath the building. Uh, one of the things that has come up as well, um, there were some questions uh, uh, about dewatering um, on uh, uh, the way that the foundation is designed. This is a pier and pile foundation design. So we've got the helical piles, and then we've got the piers. As it's designed right now, the piers are coming down to an elevation of zero. Groundwater in this area is in anywhere from one foot to three foot elevation. So what we would end up doing is uh, uh, the architect would reevaluate the depth of these piers and adjust them so that we're not getting into groundwater. We can get right on top of groundwater, not worry about dewatering, not worry about pouring concrete in groundwater, things along those lines. So we'll have to adjust that to the actual conditions that we find once we pick that building up and we can dig directly underneath it. One of the reasons why this has come into question is the um, soils in most of this area are pretty good. They're nice sandy soils. We did a test hole up in the corner of the property, which I'll show you in just a second, which had some uh, uh, surprised us by having a fair amount of clay in them, which is would, very unusual for areas like this on the island and also inconsistent with other test holes we've done in the immediate area. Uh, it, it's believed that that clay is a bit of an anomaly and it's unfortunate because it's in the area that we've got for stormwater recharge. So it affected our stormwater design. However, once we pick this building up, get it on cribbing, start to the, do the uh, uh, the work underneath it, we can get a better feel for what the actual soil and groundwater conditions are directly uh, uh, impacted by this work. Um, just real quick, going over the floor plans. This is the existing floor plan here. This is that covered porch we were talking about and the existing garage with those garage doors on that uh, right-hand side. So for the most part, the the, the building is going to stay fairly fairly consistent with what it is now. The main changes are the garage gets turned into a, a family room and the kitchen where it's in this area right here, it's going to get expanded into that what's now the covered porch, which is what moves that doorway over to the right hand side. So there's not a whole lot of changes in there, makes it a little bit more livable, gives you a little bit more uh, uh, um, uh, uh, user friendly layout a little bit more living space, but for all intents and purposes, it remains fairly consistent. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the stormwater plan I had just talked about and the, um, the test hole. So we came down elevation at about 4.5. We came down to that clay, which we found down to about nine feet below grade, which was very unusual. Um, below that, brown fine sand, which is what we would expect to see in this area. Because of that clay, it's it kind of traps groundwater at a higher elevation. So in that area, groundwater as an at, is at an elevation of about three feet to three and a half feet. So just over a foot below grade. So what that does is that requires us to have much more stormwater control uh, um, containment structures because they can't be anywhere near as deep. So what we ended up doing is preparing this stormwater design plan. We're able to capture all of the stormwater from sections one and two of the roof and just let them come right over to these stormwater chambers. For the other section on the water side of the building, we just don't have the room to capture enough 
to contain 100% of the stormwater that's generated from this section of the roof, section number three. Uh, another impact on this design uh, because of that, that clay lens is we wanted to design for a four inch rainfall. And uh, it's not a four inch per hour rain fill. No, nobody designs for that. It's a four inch over 24 hours. Um, so the idea being is if you get enough rainfall over a 24, uh, 24 hour period, you wanna be able to contain whatever that design unit is that you're looking at. Initially, we wanted a four inch. We were right at the limit. When we realized we couldn't go as deep with our leaching chambers, we had to dial it back to a two inch design, which is what's standard for the town. We were hoping to get a little bit better than standard. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the conditions on site just didn't allow that. Uh, we did a, excuse me, did a landscape plan. The, um, uh, it basically having some minor landscaping around the building itself, we didn't want to make it too dense. We didn't want to make it so that uh, if you do have storm waters flowing through and debris coming through in those, that storm water, we don't want to have something that would basically act like a net and capture debris that's flowing around. Um, so it's not a very dense landscape plan. All of the designed uh, elements are from the, uh, um, the town's list of, um, uh, of native species and recommended species for these kinds of uh, these kinds of properties. Here's our elevations. Um, it's basically looking very similar to what's there now, just eight feet higher. So it's it's been put picked up into the air. We've got some new design elements on the roof to help break up the uh, help break up the look of the the building from the roadside. And this is something that had come up at the ZBA, and then also something that came up at the CAC meeting. Uh, one of the questions was asked of how is this going to look in relation to what else is going on around it? And it's very hard for people to 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 picture in their 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 head what is this building going to look like if it's you know higher, if it's up on up on piles or up on piers. So we use this at the ZBA uh, as a comparison. Uh, the property right next door on uh, um, on Deering Harbor going up toward the uh, top of the hill. A few years ago, they went through a relatively similar project um, where they took the existing house, they lifted it up, put it on piers, and they 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 made it uh, um, uh, more compliant with FEMA flood zone regulations that were in place at that time. Um, so basically, that house is at a roof elevation, a ridge line of 27 feet is the elevation above zero, basically mean sea level. We're going to be asking for 28 feet. Um, we're bringing our finished floor up significantly more than they did, but they had a significantly steeper pitched roof. So what they traded off on a steeper roof for a lower floor, we're asking for a higher floor and a shallower roof, bringing that floor up again so that we could have that distance below and have that extra factor of safety for not getting flooding and damage during a, uh, during a heavy storm event. These photos are from this past weekend. They kind of uh, uh, unfortunately illustrate the point fairly well as to the problems at this site. This is that building next door that I was just talking about who was raised up. So we're gonna be a foot higher than that ridge line is right now. This is again, looking out into the harbor. And another one looking out into the harbor. That's the Yacht Club's uh, um, boathouse is uh, right there in the distance. Um, but you know, this is, uh, these are very similar to the same photographs we showed during the, um, during the ZBA hearing earlier this year. So, you know, these events, unfortunately, are becoming, you know, they're, they're still, they're not super common, but they're common enough now that uh, it's not a surprise anymore. You know, used to, you'd see this happen and you, you couldn't imagine, you know, where's this coming from? It was only during significant nor'easters or hurricanes now it's uh, if it happens, it's uh, um, you know it, it's unfortunately not as surprising as it once was. So that's what I have as far as my presentation is concerned. If um, I don't know if the board has direct questions for me, or if you've got questions for the uh, um, uh, questions for the property owner, be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, Matt, this is Julia. Yes. Can you hear me? 
Yeah. yeah so, hey, um, can, good. Um, can you just go over again? So, so you're saying that uh, when when you did the, the test hole approximately at nine feet, you you discovered the clay, and you're and so you're saying that there there are some scenarios that you can anticipate happening, but you don't quite know what's going to happen until you get there. Is that my understanding yeah. of what you're saying? That's exactly right. The um, in, in soils in, in in soil engineering and soil mechanics, when you're doing a test hole, it's a running joke that you know what's happening at that spot, but you just took all the dirt out of that spot, so now you don't know what's going on. And the reason being is the soils yeah. on a site or in a given area can fluctuate significantly by going 15 feet one direction, 30 feet the other. Um, in this case. Uh, 100 feet away, we had soils that were pure, beautiful sand. Um, and then here, where we were looking to do the, um, looking where we did the test hole, because that's where we we're looking to do the stormwater control, we had clay. And we didn't have clay starting at nine feet. We had clay from just below the surface to nine feet below the surface. So like a nine foot blob of clay in that area. And then um, sand after that, right? And then good sand after that, exactly. That's exactly right. So, so I guess what what I'm, to help me envision here, what what are some scenarios that could play out? Could you give me at least like two scenarios that you know you you go in? What, what could possibly happen here? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, the, the The way that the clay could impact this project is um, when we when we pick the house up off of the existing foundation, take the crawl space out of there, get it up on its cribbing and start um, digging for the, uh, uh, the, the piers and the, uh, and the helical piles. Uh, if, there's, if, that, if that clay lens has extended so it's also underneath the building, um, the only impact that could really have is that the groundwater may be a little bit higher in that area than we anticipate, in which case, the bottom of those piers won't be able to go as deep. If the groundwater, I'll give you a scenario of if let, let's assume the groundwater is at one foot elevation, which is what we expect, then we could put the bottom of that pier just above one foot and we won't have to worry about it being in groundwater. Um, if there's clay in that area, so the groundwater is actually at three feet, the bottom of the pier can go, it's going to be two feet less into the ground because it can only go down to three feet instead of going down to one foot. That's the that's really what the impact would end up being. We don't want to dewater, and we don't want to put the piers, the concrete, into groundwater. So basically what it is is if there's clay in that area, clay holds the water, the more chance of clay, the higher chance of groundwater. So the depth of that groundwater is going to be impacted by whether there's clay there or not. The depth of the groundwater then impacts the depth that we can do the piers at. So it's it, it doesn't change the overall design. The footprint stays the same. The um, the number of piers stay the same. All of that stays the same. The only thing that changes is what is the depth that that pier stops and the helical pile starts. That's basically what's impacted by it. Okay, that was that's you and that was my question. So. Okay, <laughs> so good. Got perfect, it. Good. Oh. Okay. On the drawing, it looks like you got McDonald Geoscience to do the test hall. Yeah. Um, he he yeah. usually does it for the health department purposes. I've worked with mm -hmm. uh, McDonald for a long time. Um, but uh, you only, he only goes down to 17 feet. How, how deep did he go on this one? Uh, this one he did. He went, he went to 17 feet. Yeah. 17 feet. So yeah. you don't really know what's – it's not like a, a real boring test to see what the – ground pressures are, the materials are, you didn't go to 50 feet, you didn't go to 35 feet. Right. So how do you know that the, the, the piles themselves, the, you know, the helical piles are going to have enough support if you've experienced clay? Okay, that's, um, I'm going to pass that over to uh, Gabby, who's the design architect and is designing the footings and designing the, uh, um, the piers and the helical piles. Um, Gabby, if you could introduce yourself and I will, uh, I'll mute and step into the background. Great, great. Good evening, uh, Chairman, members of the board. Uh, thank you for hearing our application this evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Fantastic, thank you, thank you. Uh, to answer that question, uh, we've elevated a couple hundred homes uh, in my career. And as uh, Matt stipulated earlier, 
Um, that's a that's an excellent question, Chairman. Uh, you know, we we typically go down anywhere between 20 and 30 feet. So the piles that we're proposing, uh, you know, we try to get an ultimate of 27 and a half ton. So we max the ton the, the tonnage of the piles uh, to an adequate uh, uh, pressure that we're looking for. So unfortunately, what ends up happening is if we come to a situation where we go down at 20 feet or 25 feet and we're still not fetching up that good soil that we're looking for, uh, unfortunately, we would have to just put some extensions and leads and continue going down until we get that 27 and a half ton ultimate uh, factor that we're looking for. Uh, furthermore, you know, when you have a pile, uh, you know, and you have a footing, the, the, the pile is really the footing. So uh, the structural stability of the piers that we're proposing are strictly to, uh, to, to assist in the diaphragm lateral control and uh, the deflection of that point load that's going down to that pile. So in several events in, in my past, when we go down and we start the, the exploratory excavation, the building is suspended up, what ends up happening is we could place that footing uh, about six inches or eight inches. We like to go about a, a foot below the average grade so it doesn't cause slurry events where if water comes, it exposes the concrete. But uh, to go to answer the question is, if we came into that type of scenario, the only thing that would happen is cost would be a factor for my clients where the lead extensions of five feet would just continually hit on top of the, the, the pile lead on the top. And then at the end, when we hit that ultimate, uh, we would just cap it, put the pile cap and put the footing right on top of that. Would there be value in getting additional borings to under, better understand the soil and, and, and soil, uh, borings that go below 17 feet? No, not really, because as Matt said uh, earlier, and you know we've done thousands of soil uh, exploratory things where even if you, 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 we went to the adjacent side, let's say uh, in the back, and we fetched up, we went down 25 feet, uh, 10, I've seen scenarios where eight feet away, it differentiates so much. So uh, it's, I don't wanna say game, but the angle that we take is when the house, the piles, we do the first test, that'll give us the true resistance and the torque we're looking for. So at the end of the day, whatever we're trying to accomplish with, with respect to the tonnage that we're going to uh, ultimately gain, that would be done by the pile. So it, it's a cost factor. Uh, you know, I've inspected the site several times. You know, the, the floors are level. They do have a foundation system. For the most part, it, it is dry. There's a lot of measures that they've taken with pumps and, and all kinds of other techniques. Uh, however, you know, with the rising waters, I, I don't think it would make a difference because if we weren't doing uh, piles, then I would agree with that. I would say, you know what? We, we can widen the footing. Uh, we can take different measures if we were gonna not have the piles, but since we are having the piles, that is like a game changer with this project. Yeah, have you, have you evaluated um, making the piers not so deep? Uh, existing elevations around five feet and you're going down five feet with them. Is there a reason you're not making them three feet deep? or four feet deep, what, what's the reason to go all the way right down to zero elevation groundwater when we know it's groundwater is at least a foot high in that area? Yeah, so, so again, I, I think that when, uh, for the sake of the foundation, uh, the, the, the conversation typically with planning boards, zoning boards, architecture with, with the heights, it, not that we don't pay attention to it. However, again, once we start the excavation and exploratory process, it could potentially go down two feet. You know, uh, I like to set the example from the average grade to a minimum of three, if we can. Uh, it doesn't make a difference really. If we went down to three feet, it's, it's not gonna change the structural stability of the building. We could clearly go down to two feet. And if, if soils are, if we start hitting water, and we don't want to, you know, fetch up more more debris or, or any granular uh, type of strata. We would just start the pile there, so we don't necessarily have to go down the five feet. 
Um, <clears throat> this is for Matt or Gabby. Uh, we, as a planning board, are not allowed to permit further than 100 square foot of expansion within the vegetative buffer. This can it's come up on a prior application just a few months ago, where our attorney uh, and the town attorney at the time were polled, and they likewise uh, interpreted the wetlands code that we really have a minimal amount of wiggle room to permit more than the 100 square foot uh, exemption in the, uh, of additional coverage in the vegetative buffer. Have you guys considered any way of reducing what seems to be, I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, somewhere about 325 to that 100 square feet? If I could address that real quick. Um, uh, I looked at that as well, and I, I was watching that previous application that you're referring to, and that came to my mind as well as we were going through this. It was after we'd gotten through uh, I don't remember if it was at the end of the ZBA or at least that was that process was well underway. Um, and so I started looking at it and looking at some old projects and things like that. And if I could share my screen again, I've got some information that I'd put together. Um, because I, not that I want to argue with the planning board's uh, uh, attorney or the town attorney, but I do have a slightly different take, um, believe it or not. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Hold on, it's loading up. Okay. Oh. I think my Zoom. Okay, hold on. Need time. <laughs> uh -oh. Give me a couple minutes. Thanks. I'm sure he knows. <laughs> yeah, he's dropped off. Yeah. Hello again. I'm back. <laughs> and I don't know where it cut off, but I was saying some brilliant stuff. <laughs> yeah, let me pull this up here. I'm going to try and share my screen real quick. There it goes. Okay, so, um, and, and I don't want, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I don't want, we've got a long evening ahead of us, I believe. But um, chapter 129.2, it says when is a permit required? There, and it gives you a very good table. And on that table, before it gets into it, it gives us a couple of different uh, answers to each one of the questions that shows up. Like, what are you allowed and not allowed to do? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And the first one, it says no. So if in that table, it said the answer is no, it says the activity is not allowed. Um, however, applications can be processed in consideration of differences between town law and DEC law. That's one of the answers. The other answer is no permit required, meaning have at it. You don't need a wetlands permit or a permit required. Um, so you're allowed to do what it is you're asking to do. You just have to get a permit to do it. And then there's another thing that has the, uh, uh, for the causeway permit. Um, so let's go on to the next page. So on the next page, <clears throat> types of activities, and there's a number of different things. This is a simplified version of the table. So I just took the section for existing structures on a lot with a bulkhead, um, which is what applies here. Um, for areas within the vegetative buffer, that zero to 75 foot mark, repair, no permit required. Uh, reconstruction with no expansion, that neither of those apply. Reconstruction with expansion upward within permit within footprint, that applies to the, the building itself. You're allowed to do it, you just have to get a permit, permit required. This is the one that gets us for the decks. Reconstruction with expansion beyond footprint, I'm sorry, not that one, because that's further away, that doesn't apply, but it's new construction outside of footprint is the second one from the bottom. It says, no, you're not okay. allowed to do that within the vegetative buffer. Within okay. the adjacent vegetative buffer, you need to get a permit to make it happen. However, in the definition, no is no activity allowed. However, it does give you a, it gives you a safety valve. 
So in applications that can be processed, if there's differences between town law and DEC law, if all other remedies have been exhausted and DEC yeah. approval or letter of non-jurisdiction is applicable. In this case, we have a DEC letter of non-jurisdiction and other act, the, uh, there is no other alternative to get to these uh, second floor areas. And there's a couple of others that, you know, obviously this is new with the uh, planning board, um, several other projects that were in front of the town board over the years where they allowed new construction within the vegetated buffer. Uh, this is one from July of 2016 out on Deering Harbor. On the right-hand side, let me see if I can get my uh, pointer going. I, I agree with yeah. you, Matt. I can cite a few too. Um, it's just that we have to rely on our attorneys uh, and, the, in, and the town attorney. And when we poll them about that same clause, which I, I would kind of agree with you, that I think that the planning board should have some flexibility for extreme cases. But uh, we were we were stifled. We were said we were told no, and we had to tell this other applicant no. And that's how we've been operating to date. This may come okay. up, and we may be able to get the town board to re-review it. But right now, we're taking. A, I think we're yeah. taking a stance. Uh, yeah. only. I am. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had the same. We had the same. We, we had the same issue before or the previous, where we went back and said, "Come up with a way of staying in the same footprint." And what they did is they moved something and moved things around so they could stay in the footprint. Right. Um, okay. Because which, which, there is, so you said it, it's the. Uh, I, I would like to have some flexibility to help real hardship cases out. And this is what I would say is a pretty hard, pretty hard yeah, case. But I think there's, there are alternatives because basically you have the footprint of the house. If you reduce the footprint, if you reduce the living area of the house to stay within the same envelope, you could have what you want. What you're trying to do is go beyond the envelope of the current house, which doesn't is not allowed by by the uh, Hey Matt, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. This page varies on uh you hear? Matt, you hear that? Yeah, I can hear you. How much expansion? Yeah. How much expansion are you asking for? Um, hold on a second. Let me get. Make sure you heard. Which we haven't seen before. Before we used to see like a delta, where we show the actual deltas between, it, and we're not seeing that quite as clearly on this application. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Let me. Um, can you guys hear me now? Or are we having yeah. technical yeah. difficulties yeah. still? Okay. All right. Good. Um, the difference is. Let's see. Give me just a quick second. And also, and, and while when I'm done looking at this, uh, Gabby and I and the property owner had gotten together with a couple of different alternatives as well. We can't get it down to zero. It's just, you know, without coming in from underneath the building, which I, I don't see how that makes any sense, um, we can't get it down to zero. Um, however, what we're talking 100. about. 100. 100. We're not asking uh, for zero. We, we, we have flexibility of allowing 100 square feet. That's it. So if you can get it down to less than 100, that's something we could consider as an alternative. Okay. All right. Okay. The uh, um, you know where the, the plan is. We're looking at it right now. We're adding let's see about 100, give or take 100 square feet of rear deck. Another 73 for the stairs. So that's 173. Four another 140, 270, 310. Uh, you know, just running real quick numbers off the top of my head, we're somewhere around 450, 450 square feet between the deck in the rear, the steps in the front, the step for the electric meter, um, all of those different things. Um, you know, that's so, so Matt, just what's in the vegetative buffer. We have the ability to permit in the adjacent regulated area. That's not a problem. As you presented up front, you wrote said approximately 135 feet for the new steps in the new front steps of which 135 feet are in the vegetative buffer. You said approximately 42 square feet for the electrical meter platform is in the vegetative buffer. You didn't mention what the expansion in the vegetative buffer is for the back deck and the steps. 73 and 73 and 100, is that it? 73 and 104. Yeah, we were 557 to 
661. 661, yeah. 104 and 73 for the deck, the stairs, according to this plan. So just under 180. Um, I'm going to show you. I've, I had come up with another plan, which is not preferred, uh, but if it's a difference between getting denied and approved, um, where we've got a 60 foot landing on the front of the building within the vegetated buffer, um, 42 square feet for the steps for the electric meter. The rear deck stays the same with the exception of we remove 21 square feet of depth steps and walk away from the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, like where that elevator was, the lift, there's a 50-foot walkway that would then be converted to a stairway. So that 50 feet would go from walkway to stairway. I don't know if you would consider that new construction or modified construction, um, but we would have... Uh, uh, you know, so 60, 42, 50, minus 21. Closer. Yeah, that's you know, 100, we're, we're, that's 150. 100 plus. It's down to like 130. 42 plus, it's 102 plus 50. It's 152. Is there any other way to get to the electric meter? It's got to be up above flood zone. So. You know, there really isn't. Um, I don't know. I don't know. You could put it right next to the front door, I guess. Or put it in the back deck or something. So it's not on the side. It's like a, so you have another way of getting up to it. I'm not sure what legal requirements are. I'm just trying to think out of the box. No, I'm, I'm. <laughs> this is in line with the, what we discussed. Yeah, we exactly. My, my concern was the back of the property and the expansion. So mm -hmm. if, if yeah. there's some way that. Well, well it's, all, it's all within the 75 foot. I mean, pretty right, much. But to, but to keep it down, yeah. to keep it lower than it is right now. Yeah. I think it can be done. But I'd also like to see this mock up. I mean, it's yeah. hard to. Did you? Did that? you? Did you happen to put these in like a drawing format? These other these I did, and actually, I had a I had a bunch of them printed up to bring up with me, and I'll, I'm going to share my screen again. Hopefully, I don't have another. Uh, hopefully, I don't have another uh, um, technical issue with it, but I'll show you on the screen. Pat, what, while you do that, if, if I can interject, uh, please. So I I respect uh, the board's uh, comments. You know. In, in my history of, of doing elevations, and I, and I understand the bylaws and the codes, et cetera, et cetera, you know, I could understand uh, that argument. I, and I truly do because it's written in the code and we do respect it. However, uh, you know, the concession would be that we're not within that buffer and adding livable square footage. It's, it's clearly ingress and egress. And that's what not, that's not the point. That's not the point. <laughs> On their last application, which I'm unfortunately you're not familiar with, we the applicant wanted to move a, a wooden, a small wooden staircase off the side of the house, and we unfortunately said no. We were told, you know, basically the building department that would be considered new construction, even if it was moved. And so that's the message we were getting. Yes, sir. So yeah. in this rendition, you're going to see that Matt is putting up. Uh, I'm actually glad we did this. Uh, so. We, we just kept it very simple and we, we're trying to, you know, juggle a few uh, different uh, angles here. You know, we did, I believe, you know, have some conversation with the Heights and uh, if I'm not mistaken, they were, they were okay with our proposal with uh, pulling up that front portion and just only doing one stair. You know, it's is a designer and I'm sure, you know, you guys have a lot of experience too. Some of you guys are design professionals. We try to please all aspects architecturally, zoning, setbacks, buffers, et cetera, et cetera. So this rendition that Matt's going to pull up, uh, it's it's really like a bare minimum where we're showing, uh, uh, can everybody see this? Yeah. You want to interject? You want to go for it, Matt? Uh, yeah, real quick. Just um, let me get my pointer going. Yeah, Matt, could you put the red one back, red cursor? Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up. Yep. I said I might not be able to because I think that's what was crashing my system a couple of times. Um, you can see your, you can see your cursor. You can, you can see that one? Okay. Yes. yes so yes. this is, again, 75-foot wetland setback. 
Yep. Um, this is the, the least of our preferred uh, options, um, but this is the landing for the front door. 60 square feet is within the vegetated buffer. We come out 61 square feet in the adjacent regulated area. Um, we still have the 42 square feet for the uh, uh, electric meter. This holds the same rear deck as what's there right now, just eight feet higher. Um, and then we convert what's that existing walkway. It's, you know, pavered, uh, you know, slate, um, stepping stones type of thing. Um, it converts that into a staircase. So we go from stepping stones to stairs, 50 square feet either way. Um, and then this here, there's 21 square feet of steps and stepping stones that go away. So we're adding a 60 square foot landing here, uh, landing and steps, 42 square foot steps uh, and landing for the electric meter. So 102 square feet, we're taking away 21. So we're coming down to 81 and the deck gets rebuilt as it currently exists, just higher up. And the stepping stones walkway here turns into a stair. Matt, are those stepping stones like a concrete slab walkway or are they just paver set in dirt? Um, Gabby or Lisa, can you chime in on that? I think that they're, um, I, I can't think of off the top of my head exactly what the construction is on those. They're just pieces of slate. Yeah, there's pavers and dirt. Pictures. On top of the dirt, it's not really set in too deep. Can you see that? It's not more substantial. Yeah. The stairs would be permeable, I, I assume. Yes. Yeah. It's all. It would all be you know wood deck with um, you know gap between the boards so that you don't have any uh, um, ponding of water or anything like that. Yeah. So this option, we, we came up as option C1.1, um, which then, you know, I was doing everything I could to try and get it to where we needed it to be. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it basically shaves everything. It shaves off the fat, all the fat off of it. And then the only other wood thing would be to reduce the size of the existing deck to compensate for the 100 square feet, which I'm sure you guys don't want to do. Yeah. But that doesn't work for that. It's 100 feet of new construction. I don't think you can take away. Yeah, so this is a discussion that we've had in the past and I've had with Reed, yeah. where mm -hmm. I've always interpreted the 100 square feet. If you remove 30 feet, then you have 30 feet to rebuild. Um, right. I've had this, it's, it's, it's poorly written in the code. I've, yeah. I've had this conversation with uh, the town attorney yeah. and others. Uh, the one pushback we got was from uh, the billing department saying we've not categorized the use of the hundreds documented the use of the hundred square foot exemption since 2000. So we don't feel comfortable accepting the, the ad in the bat. Though I do have it even from previous building inspectors in writing and previous town attorneys in writing that it's a, it's a, it's tradable. It, it, it seems though with this current recommendation, it's a two foot difference, right? You're at 1642. Currently with what is being in this new proposal, it's 102 square feet, correct? No, no, it's so what, no, what, what is the new one? The one he just showed us 60, 42 and 50. Where's so the, that's 152. Where's the 50? So the 50 is the steps in the, in the, oh, the, I was the, the stairs, do the stairs count because the, are they permeable? Well, that could, could be considered could they, could they be well, just front could be considered per bill. I just yeah, I feel yeah. far, sorry, yeah. really sorry for the previous applicant. I, I yeah. would agree that we have flexibility, but yeah. we didn't right. allow the right. previous right. Right. applicant right. even this. We, we would be setting a bad precedent. Yeah, you'd have to put mm -hmm. the stair basically. You have to remove it off the deck. There you have stairs up. Or 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 we can possibly propose putting the stair within the deck. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Within the deck footprint. And um, that's something that the Conservation and Advisory Council requested. Yeah. Yeah. That seems like the only other option. Because then you're at 102, which probably could be considered. Yeah, they had said to keep the stairs to existing footprint. Yeah, at 102, that's de minimis. 104, whatever, you know, whatever it comes to. Um, 
are I, I would, if, if you guys are willing to do that, I think mm -hmm. I look around here and I yeah. think there's consensus that we yeah. would. That's the only problem. Yeah. 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 The only other thing that I then I'll bring up to uh, Matt or uh, and whoever wants to answer this is that they indicated the bulkhead is failing. Yeah. And what did you guys see? I know David and Julia, you went and saw what was it? Do you, I didn't, I'm not a bulkhead expert, so I don't know if I'd say it wasn't in great condition. For sure, it's definitely right. been. Is yeah, there any just, plan I mean, to replace the bulkhead with this project? It, it seems like you, it would make sense to do it while this construction, the whole thing, place is being torn up once. Yeah, uh, Lisa, we, I'm sorry. Uh, did we, no, we, go ahead, Kevin. We had someone uh, look at that bulkhead, correct? And they said it was, it was structurally sound? Do we yeah, have I actually sent the email to you and to Gabby and to the Heights. I had it examined uh, right after the storm. I guess it was Sunday or Monday. Um, to, is um, anyone from the Heights there that has a copy of that letter maybe? Did we get that? It wasn't sent to the planning board. Could you get it sent to the planning board directly? <clears throat> I have yours. I have the other one. Yeah, I, I have a I have a I sent I emailed a copy of the letter to the Heights and to Matt and to Gabby. Don't know if that I assume that let me see what they have. If, if you could either or have Matt send it directly to the planning board, that would be appreciated. We can, we can, just, we can look at this now, but we'll probably need to get an actual direct. That's uh, from uh, he, he, he me Marine Construction. I sent, I usually send all my correspondence to Matt and then he forwards it to you, but I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. You. It's okay. He's been busy not flying. I mean, I just, <laughs> wanted, I just wanted to add that when David and I went there, I, yeah. I did have in my notes that we, we had, no, it didn't come up in our yeah. discussion, yeah. But, but we said something to the effect of we were there doing our part. For the yeah, exactly. And that if they were going to do something, it would have to go it through it. It would have to go through a process anyway. Yeah. But the same thing what you said if we're going to dig up all this stuff and dig it up yeah and we uh, we, well. uh, we mentioned it on was it brianza and they came back yes and brianza was what, what, so they, they, and they took uh, they put it as part of their application um there have been other applications in the past that we've made that suggestion yeah i think it's done. i think it's worth while as a recommendation if you probably if we could do it all in one bow it would probably be more efficient and based on the recent the storms board and the rain, and we've all experienced this. But they, so they would still have to go through, doesn't it go through a different permitting process to do? Yes, it is. Yeah, so yes. they'd have to go through that process anyway. Yeah. But we could pre approve something, I guess. I'm not sure how that works. Well, they don't come to us for bulkheads at all. Okay, so now. And I know this, this bulkhead is, has had work done in the past. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's outside of our purview. Yeah. James, you're still on the MA, WMAC, right? Yes. How do you, how does the WMAC re review bulkheads that are failing. older, failing? You place the you know, in place. Usually, if it's a wood bulkhead, it would be a vinyl substitute. Understood. Understood. And that was done. That the um, yacht club did the their yeah. whole extension okay. right up to it. Um, they even the yacht club even put in a return because Generally, this one was the, this one was failing. Is, is yeah, question. yeah, yeah. But there's nothing the yeah, WMAC the has authority to uh, to state replacement. The WMAC, if it's a pre previously hardened shoreline and the thing is failing, generally approve its uh, reconstruction. But there's nothing you can do to mandate it, so to speak. If it's failing and it's causing issues to the adjacent properties, you know, the, you know, there's a condemnation process that the town can yeah. Yeah. You know, enter into. Um, we as a committee have not you know, demanded that anybody okay. yeah. be placeable. Okay. And also the CAC mentioned it. And the yeah. CAC mentioned the CAC is an advisory board. They, yeah. they mentioned lots of things that are outside the purview, right? Yeah. It's, it's really like 
No, we do. But, uh, but we saw it. I mean, I, I can't yeah. deny what oh, I'm saying. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I know, but, it, it, but it's, it's for the it's for the board to the town board. Let's uh, let's uh, um, we have two other. Did we take pictures? We have two other yeah. public hearings. Um, what do you guys want to do? You want to keep this open until we get updated plans? Yeah, that would be my recommendation. And I did have one last question. I'm sorry, I just want to get clarity. You mentioned Matt uh, when you were going having the conversation about the uh, the uh, taking care of all the runoff. You talked about two feet of rain. You talked about the backside, and you, you mentioned the words I heard with that the, the back runoff was uh, inadequate or it wasn't going to be able to be adequate or should not be able to handle it. And I, I, I'm, that might have been a misspeak. So I just want to make sure our mishearing could no, be I adequate. Because I have the same thing yeah. about the four inch versus the two. Yeah. Well, you said, you said, you said basically you did all the stuff in the front so you could get handle all that. And then the backside, you were, it's, I swear it sounded like you said it would not be able to handle. And I'm sure if that means the two feet or the four feet or, or what? Uh, two inches. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll clarify. The, in your, 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 you're partly correct. The okay. what we're designing for is the two inch rainfall um, yeah. on the front side, the front three quarters of the roof area, which is what we're we're capturing from. We can yeah. handle the full two inch rainfall on the rear side, that last quarter of the roof area. We just don't have the room, the physical space to put enough drainage to handle the full two inches of rainfall. So what we would end up doing is capturing what ends up being about a third of that rainfall. That's all the area we, we can, that's the, all the space we've got for storm draining. Um, what would end up happening- Based on the assumption that there's clay in that area too. That's correct. If there's not clay in that area, and we can't tell until we get, you know, so we, we move, the, uh, move the deck, because that's basically where the storm drainage is going. Um, if we can get a little bit deeper leaching pools in there or leaching chambers, then I can do it. I can handle the two inch rainfall. Um, I'm going under worst case assumption at this yep. point. Um, so we capture a, a third of the storm water from that portion of the roof. Um, keep in mind right now we're catching none of the storm water from that <laughs> portion of the roof. So yep. we're getting better by 33%. Um, and uh, if the you know if roof runoff as it comes off the roof it goes into the chambers if it fills up the chambers it's going to spill into the soils around it keep in mind that when we design these things we design them to hold a hundred percent of what's going in there what actually happens is as water is coming in it's also filtering out at the filtering same out. time yeah so yeah. the reality isn't that yet you, you truly have to hold the a hundred percent of that that volume um, but that's, you know, that's what we're designing to. Again, we're designing to the worst case scenario. Then can I just add that the Heights and, and their letter, I think in regards to that, if I understand your letter correctly, Stella or Laurie, was that you're saying if, if it's, if it's not adequate, what he's proposing, that's what you meant in your letter yeah. that you would like them to be held to that, to make sure it is remedied if it creates any hazard for your properties, right? Can I? Yeah. I'm yeah, just yeah. saying, I noted that yeah. what he oh, says. Yeah. Yeah. They speak. So. It's Estella Lagudis from the Shelter Island Heights Property Owners Corp. And really what we meant there is it's a challenging location. 100%. So we totally get that you might not be able to design for perfection. So what we were trying to reserve is let's see how it goes. And if we still have an issue, we'd like to be able to go back and revisit it and see if there are any other alternatives with the homeowner. Um, but that's really, I mean, we understand that it's a very difficult topography there. I think we're, we're going to have to allow them to design to their best standards. Yeah. Yeah. If they have problems down the road, I don't, that, that's long beyond, past us mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, the town's involvement. That would yeah. be between you two, I think. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. But that's, that is exactly what we're going for. And, and I'm assuming, Matt, that you have no viable alternative at this time. Just given the space, it, we're yeah. making the best of the situation, as yeah. you know, uh, um, as is clear. And and, and the, yeah. the property owner is more than willing to work with the Heights if there's stormwater that's coming off of this property onto the Heights roadway. Um, it, just as if it was going the opposite way, they'd be yeah. more than willing to work with the Heights on you know mitigating problems, whichever yeah. direction they're coming from or headed to. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, okay. 
Can I just understood? Go? Good. Thank you for I, I want to make sure I heard that correctly. So thank you. Oh, so I, I think and uh, because we have other applications, yes. uh, public hearings, we're okay. not going to close this. So can I make a, a I motion. Just one question. Wait, Ian, I'm sorry. Ian, just... Yeah, I'm sorry. Can I just can I just interject once one last final question? So, so, so the, the reason why, just so I'm clear on the design, we're leaving this open is because we're exceeding that square footage. But what if we went on record tonight and said that we would incorporate that rear stair onto the deck and eliminate that square footage to resolve that issue? Would that be able to be passed this evening? No, we'd have to see the final plans. So basically, we would just be incorporating the stair within the deck. That it's a very simple, uh, it's a very simple design. It's not going to be a crazy change to it. So I'm just wondering instead, instead of waiting for another couple of weeks, and I mean, I'm just uh, you know pleading with with the board because you know we just want to get the ball rolling my clients parents are very old and and we just want to try to see this through to to get the shovel in the in the sand here uh so uh I, if you want to take that stance i have no problem closing the hearing uh, if the drawings don't meet our expectations we're we we're going to have to uh, have you re reopen start over um, the other uh, options, the other thing is we're not going to be discussing it tonight because we're waiting for materials to come in. So uh, it might benefit you just to leave it open until next time, but that we, we'll leave it that our termination to you, I think. Yeah. I'm sorry, Beth. I, I, Ian, yeah, you, you still have to also open it up to the public to see yeah. if there's anybody who has comments. On the revised and, plans. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. We, have to leave it, we have to leave it open. Because the public has to have the opportunity. Yeah, I, I think uh, Bess, you're advising to leave it open, right? Well, I, I, you also have to. You haven't allowed the offered to the public to speak okay. yet for tonight. Would That's anyone the, that here the first thing. like to <laughs> in the audience speak? Uh, we have your your letters of support. In, leaving it open. Well, I'm being advised by attorneys to my attorney to. Are you guys making a statement or? It's very quick. Very quick. If, if we have your, we have your, we know how to read and we have your, your letters. Of, so yeah, yes, please, if it's something new, please add it, not, not reiterate what you have here already. Yeah, so I'm not going to reiterate that. The only, um, uh, you state your, your, hi, Gloria you know, Beard Raymond, I'm the manager for Children Island Heights Property Owners Corporation. And the only thing I'd like to add is um, the architect and the owner did share the alternate designs with us which were reviewed by our architectural committee and our property and roads. And um, we are okay with the original as well as the alternative that was presented to you that you just saw That's this helpful. evening. So okay. we, we did look at that. So we started with that. And um, I think everything else you've already already talked about. Yep. Um, and um, just consider the recommendations on our letter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone on Zoom would like to make some comments? Okay. I don't see any raised hands. So with that, I, I think it'd be best to adjourn this to uh, our next meeting, which is going to be on Tuesday, February 13th at 7 p.m. I make a motion to adjourn them. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Next public hearing is for Michael at 2 Bay Avenue. Catherine, did you want to read the public notice or? Was... Notice is hereby given that the following hearings will be held by the shelter planning board on the 16th day of January, 2024, in person at the Shelter Island Town Hall, 38 North Ferry Road, the Shelter Island, New York. Applications are scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter. A public hearing regarding an application for a wetland permit by William and Eileen Michael. The property, which is the subject of the application, is located at 2 Bay Avenue, Shelter Island, New York. The applications, or sorry, the applicants are requesting a wetlands permit as required pursuant to the wetlands and wetlands code 129-2 to renovate an existing single family residence, construct an addition, 
replace and expand existing stairs, add new stairs, add all the headache basement entrance, convert existing room to conditioned space with new foundation below and roof expansion upwards, construct new pool with patio, new habitable accessory structure with basement, and a new well and septic system. Applicants are also requesting a wetlands permit as required pursuant to a wetlands code 129-2 to replace an asphalt driveway with permeable driveway, demolish existing walkway with stairs, and add new 1,000 gallon underground circle class type two. Thank you. We have comments from the Conservation Advisory Council. Um, they advise uh, number one to deny the wetlands permit since the work indicated in Town of Shelter Island notice of disapproval date 12 4 2023 has already been done without without a valid permit. I do not know that that's actually the case. I'm sure the building department has issued a permit for the work that is ongoing. Number two, some of the items addressed in submission two year, years ago have been submitted, pulled up. Uh, I guess that means that they, the recommendations made two years ago are being entertained now. A pool depth of four feet uh, instead of deeper and uh, automatic pool cover. The following items revised two years ago have not been addressed with the present owner's name. Relocation of a propane tank out of the 100 foot setback. Submit updated site plan more recent than eight 2918, and I don't know that that's the latest plan. I'm sure you guys have something newer. Number four, install wire back sill fence as installed. Install wire back sill fence as installed or as shown on the site plan. Submit basement plans for pool house. Relocate, relocate crepe myrtle clear of septic system. Then they say no construction in 100 foot indicated by code 133-12F3. That's a zoning issue that does not deal with weapons. They vote four to one to deny. You guys can um, hold on just a second. I'm, I'm, I can't hear you guys now. Hold on. Okay, can you hear me? No, hold on. Okay, planning board, can you guys hear me? No. Matt, this is Beth, I'm on Zoom also. I can hear you, but I can't hear, I don't see the planning board anymore. Okay, uh, planning board, I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. I just talked to Beth, she can hear me, but she can't hear you guys. I'm gonna log off and log back in real quick. Yeah, I just talked to Catherine, she will be restarting the meeting. It's us. We seem like everyone got, we got everyone back. Here we go. It was on our, oh, we lost Matt though. He goes, I couldn't hear you, I'm gonna log out and come back in. He'll be back, he'll be back. He, he just said he's gonna log in and log it back in. Yeah. He'll, he'll be back in a minute. It's all your fault, Christina. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> our our uh, audio is flipping. Uh, uh. Okay, are we back? Are we back on, uh, are we back in, in communication? I can hear you, Matt. It sounds okay. like the planning board is having issues on their end. We're back I think on. we're back on. Oh, okay, back on. Back on? Okay, good. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so did everyone hear, just to clarify, everyone hear the CAC comments that I read? 
Yes. Good. Okay. Matt, okay, great. Thank uh, you. Take it away. All right. Matt Sherman, Sherman Engineering and Consulting. I'm here on behalf of the property owner, Bill Michael, who's in the audience, along with uh, Pam Postel, his, uh, um, his architect, and James Eklund, who's the contractor on the project. Um, as with before, I got a hopefully a quicker presentation, um, and I'll share that if I could share my screen. Um, Okay. Um, I'm assuming you can all see on the screen the uh, survey that's on there right now. Um, this property, uh, as it had been mentioned in the CAC uh, comments, it had been approved for a wetlands permit a couple of years ago. It's uh, on West Neck Creek, um, Simpson Road to the north, Bay Avenue to the, uh, uh, to the, the east, and uh, developed property to the south as this, uh, as this page is uh, configured. A 100 foot wetland setback <coughs> is running like right down here through the uh, house. This is the 75 foot wetland setback. And, and let me go back a screen. This is the existing house as it's right now, the existing septic system, which is within that adjacent regulated area, and the, adjacent, the existing well, which is within the vegetated buffer. The uh, proposed work is going to be an area of a new foundation, which is underneath an existing screen room, um, another small foundation here that's underneath an existing part of the building, filling in an area that's a current cellar entrance, so like a Bilco door entrance, and then some other miscellaneous stairs and steps and things like that. Some are going away, some are coming in. That's for the main part of the house. That, we're not asking for a wetlands permit for a majority of that because it was approved and is under construction now with a valid building department permit. The wetlands permit is for some of the small walkways and, um, and steps. And then this area here, which is between the main house um, or to the side of the main house, a basement entrance, a patio, proposed swimming pool, little patio area, and then a small pool cabana. All of those improvements are within the adjacent regulated area. The um, closest of them being the, excuse me, the corner of the pool patio at just over 76 feet from the wetlands boundary, which on this site is the bulkhead. areas that we're talking about here um, within the uh, within that adjacent regulated area, 68 square feet of stair and walkway, um, 19 square feet of the building. The uh, proposed pool is 684 square feet, um, patio 407, and then the uh, cabana, which is 282 square feet. The new construction within the vegetated buffer is 43 square feet of stair. Um, 38 square feet of it is within the vegetated buffer. These walkways, these concrete walkways are basically remaining as is, or maybe we might change them to a uh, um, to like a permeable paver, something of that effect. So the impermeable concrete would be going away. We've got an existing stair that we're adding three square feet to. So we're at a total of um, uh, 41 square feet new work within the vegetated buffer. Um, the new septic system is going here on the roadside. So it was over here between in that vegetated in the adjacent regulated area. It's coming out and going completely 100 feet from the wetlands. Stormwater dry wells are going into what is currently an asphalt driveway. It will be turned into a gravel driveway, removing uh, about 420 square feet total. Most of it is outside of the regulated area. We've got dry wells over here for the swimming pool and a dry well um, right up here for the uh, roof runoff for the pool cabana. 
the new supply well, if you remember before it was right down here, just on the water side of where the proposed pool would be going. The new well is way out in the corner as far landward as we can get it for this site. The um, previous site, uh, um, let me see, our previous site coverage, we were at 9% uh, for buildings and 14% for total. And then with the proposed slight increase on that, the proposed site coverage, we're basically at 10% um, and 17%. So for the size of the property, we're not anywhere near the uh, the limits uh, uh, for the uh, for the zone for the A zone of the property. The basement layout. Um, these areas here are where we're getting our new foundation on what would be the top of the page here. New storage area. This is the existing basement entrance that's getting a new foundation and turning into uh, uh, support for the floor above. Same thing with this area over here. Um, the basement is getting a rec room with a half bath laundry room. For the first floor, the kitchen is getting reconfigured. The existing screen room is turning into a dining room. Then we've got a living room, a uh, bedroom on the first floor, uh, mud room and garage. And then on the second floor, you're uh, getting three, uh, excuse me, four bedrooms and a few bathrooms on the second floor, small office area on the second floor. The elevations of the building, this is one of the main differences between this project and the one that was uh, uh, approved previously, is in looking at the building from the road size, there's not any increase in massing of the building. It's gonna be refurbished, it's gonna be uh, um, uh, reconfigured slightly, made much, you know, brought into uh, uh, much more, uh, The building itself is remaining very similar to what's there now. Um, you've got a new stair on the left hand side going down to the basement, as I uh, um, mentioned earlier, a new entryway, but it's uh, basically a reflection of what's there already. For the for the pool house or the, the pool cabana, it's a very small building. Um, it's open, um, so you're going to have a small bathroom, uh, half bath, toilet and sink. Um, and then an open cabana area in uh, um, in three quarters of the building. This is the view from the uh, road. So as you're looking at the building from standing on uh, um, standing on bay, you're looking at it, the house obviously to the right hand side, the pool would be here in the middle, and then the uh, pool cabana on the left hand side. Again, to give you a little bit of a reference and uh, something to compare it to from the previous approved plan, this is what was approved, the pool and a uh, uh, pool house with a storage shed on the back side of it. And that's what we're looking at. It's uh, significantly smaller as far as an overall project is concerned. The house itself is smaller. The accessory building is significantly smaller than what was already approved. Um, one of the big concerns we have is obviously depth to groundwater here, just as with uh, the previous application. In this case, <clears throat> groundwater is one at a one foot elevation. The um, keeping the bottom of the swimming pool two feet above groundwater. That's what brings us to that four and a half foot or so of total depth for the uh, for the proposed swimming pool. The uh, pool house, the depth of that foundation will be at a uh, made so that we're not going to have to dewater and not going to go into uh, go into groundwater for pouring concrete or or anything to that effect. The only thing that's happening in the basement of this pool house is the uh, pool equipment. So it's not like we have to worry about um, you know having having seven and a half foot headroom or anything like that in the basement of this building. Uh, the vegetation plan, uh, Liberty Landscape had done the vegetation plan. For the most part, as far as the wetlands permit is concerned, what we're concerned about is what's happening on this bank. Um, and it's uh, seagrasses are going to be there. It's about a 10 to 12 foot wide buffer. The bank has a natural slope that comes from the top of the bulkhead up to, up to where the uh, lawn levels out. 
So that natural slope there is what would be receiving all of the um, all of that vegetation, all of those sea grasses. So that's the uh, that's the gist of the project. I've got you know, some. If the board has questions, I can uh, answer anything. Uh, again, uh, the property owner as well as his architect and his contractor are here as well. If you have any questions for them, I went to the uh, site with Marcus a few days ago. We did notice that the bulkhead is new, so we don't have the same problems we're going to have in this heights project. Um, did have a question about a pipe that was near the bulkhead that has an uh, alarm company sign in front of it so no one would hit their ankles on it, it's picking up about so high. What is that pipe? It's not, it's not an oil tank, right? Yeah, I, don't know. I know it's not an oil tank because that was taken out years ago. Um, I'll pass that on to Bill. Flag? Or... Could be a flag. I, I've noticed that there. I don't know what it is. I know it's not an oil tank. So we looked at that. Um, you put your laundry on one of those little. Uh, I, I, think if, I think if they're going to talk me up and announce themselves, okay. right? So, I'm uh, sorry. I think. I think. Um, I man, we'll have, we'll have to try to figure out what that is then. Yeah. Yeah, we can look um, into it. I know when we, I had done a project at this, this site uh, probably five or six years ago now, I would think. And when we uh, removed the oil tank that was um, in the area where the pool would be going now uh, in that ballpark area. So I know that it's not that. So we'll, we'll look into it and figure out and see what's going on. Um, I don't, I didn't have any problems. Um, the one thing I would like to see is the silt fencing towed in right now. The silt fencing is above grade and, Soil can go in between the, that bottom flaps really got to be buried in the ground um, of the existing silt fencing. That's the only. You're supposed to dig it in. That's what the, the reason that flap is extended and that's what holds the earth from, from blowing out the bottom. Yeah, but absolutely. Be... And the CAC had a good comment when they looked at the site that the silt fencing isn't in the location of where it would be once the wetlands permit is approved and that work is allowed to, to move forward. Um, and that's what we'll end up doing is, so if the wetlands permit's approved and we can put the pool and the pool house in and do that other work associated with it, we'll make sure that that silt fence is installed as shown on the plan and installed correctly, absolutely. Um, I'm happy that this project is smaller than the previous round. The previous round was contentious because of a rolling shell that someone wanted to encapsulate mm -hmm. uh, or store. Um, so I really have no, no issues with this. Did you guys did you guys note the propane tank uh, that the CAC? Oh, the CAC in? was asking about the propane yeah. tank, and I looked at the, the uh, resolution from uh, the town board um, previously, and they wanted the propane tank out of the hundred foot setback. Is that something you can do? Is there room to do it? Um, the only place we can move that tank would be up by the. Uh, um, that northeast corner, and I'm getting it real very close to the uh, to the septic system. Um, I can look to see. I can't put it on the southeast because of the uh, the well. The health department recommendations are that we stay 100 feet away from the well yep. for an underground propane tank. Yep. So right. I'm kind of stuck. I can I can see if we can squeeze it up in that northeast corner, but it's going to be tight. I've got to stay. I'll look at the code, but I think the health department recommends 20 feet away from the septic, and that puts me right to the property line, and I can't, I can't do that. And wasn't there something about the uh, propane group suing Suffolk County about their separation distances? So these, they did, yeah. these yeah, separation that... distances are best best practices defined by the health department, but if you don't have to meet them, you could shorten up those distances it, it's half it's it, as with most of these things it's a mix um the health department at first wanted 150 feet from your well to your propane tank then they went down to 100 feet they got sued the uh, um the the 100 foot is a recommendation it's not a hard requirement um i believe that the hard requirement is 10 feet from the well and 20 feet from the septic, but I have to double check on that. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, it's something to that effect. You know, so I can put it over by the well. It's, you know, it, it would give us, you know, maybe another 20 feet 
you know, so maybe we'd be at 120 feet from the wetlands boundary. It is getting closer than the health department is recommending we get it to the well. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I don't know which, which yeah, recommendation is well, more. Yeah. Uh, the reason I bring it up is that board members have mentioned, the CAC has mentioned, and it was in the previous town board resolution. So if, if there's something we can do to get it out of the hundred uh, foot, then I, I feel happy to, to appease okay. everyone. That's and then the only other two things from the CAC that I want a clarification on too is that they were asking about the basement plans for the pool house. I'm assuming that you just addressed that before when you said that it's just, just going to have pool equipment. You don't you don't have the standard ceiling in there. Nothing's yes. there are no real plans for the basement, right? I mean, no, it's an it's an unoccupied space. Yeah. I assume that's yeah. correct. It's just mechanical equipment is all that's going in there. Absolutely. Yeah. And then they were also asking about, about the landscaping plan with crepe myrtle being cleared. Uh, I watched the CAC uh, meeting. They were just basically they didn't want the plant to be put on top of the leaching field. Oh, so you so can. the roots don't come down in there. And so that's that's that was their major concern. So I don't think that's very hard to move a crepe myrtle a couple of feet over. Right, that's correct. Yeah, Matt, the total expansion in the uh, vegetative buffer is like forty-one square feet. Uh, yeah, let me get you the exact number here real quick. It's yeah, you've got a 38 feet of um, 38 feet here. You got yeah, 41 square feet total in the uh, vegetative buffer is the All expansion. Right. Very and good. It's, two, it's a portion of two different sets of steps. Yeah. Does anyone in the audience have any comments? Does anyone on Zoom have any comments? I have two questions. Oh, oh it's fine. You get sorry, around. That's, okay. Gun. That's okay. That's okay. Is anybody on Zoom? No. He goes first. Okay. Um, just a couple questions. Uh, one is I did notice, and I think you mentioned in the first talk about the, the site plan. The site plan does look like it's from 2017, 2018. Is there any problem with it being that old? Uh, Matt, do you want to talk to that? The older site uh, yeah, plan? It's, it's the base map for the map. The site plan is different. The site plan is, you know, the current site plan that was done for the current property owner. Yep. The um, the base map survey was used to start that. In a case yep. like this wetlands, where the wetlands boundary is at the bulkhead, it's, it's not, not going to change. Closer. And right. that's really the concern I would have if I was reviewing one of these, where yep. you want to make sure that that wetlands limit is is the most current, most accurate one you can have. That's standard. Yeah, cool. The other question that I had is on the test hole, which is also from 2017, was the last time this was tested. Is that good? Expect you to move it off? It tells you what the soil quality is going down. Uh, so we don't expect it. Uh, we don't find it into different types of soil for construction and for mm -hmm. percolation for the health department. Um, it tells us what the water level is at the day that was taken. Water does go up and down to some degree. But uh, you don't need the update of test. Okay. I just wasn't sure. Thank you. Howard, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, I don't know if it's under your jurisdiction. We've had this discussion before about the um, zoning requirement for 133, and you said it was a miswrite. Uh, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, I, I, Howard, it, Howard we, we've talked about this on every application. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and it's it's a part of the zoning. It's not part of the wetlands code. If it's we've been, I've asked the town board on a, new, a couple of occasions to to clarify that language, and they're in the process of doing so. Okay. So I, I don't think uh, it's never been flagged uh, by any of the uh, plan examiners in the past. Um, and so it's only recently been mentioned as a topic. Uh, I, I can't speak to it, but the town board is working on uh, clarifying that. So uh, then you wouldn't take this into consideration because the planning, uh, the town board has actually given you the jurisdiction to, or you've rewritten that part. We don't you know. have a jurisdiction over zoning, Howard. and. Again, this is, it, it would be absolutely contrary to the wetlands code uh, and it, it, it doesn't make sense and no plan examiner has ever flagged it. So um, I think I think until, the, I think the town board knows there are handful of things they have to take care of and hopefully they'll address it sooner than later. 
Okay, I'll bring that up with them then. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, the other question I had is, I'm looking at the 129 code, which you are now responsible for correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I look and it seems that the, they've already excavated underneath the existing porch. And if they have a building department permit for that. That's not in our purview. The building department has issued them a permit for that work already. Okay. So that, that's not your purview. Okay. So please, please talk to uh, the building department on that one. Okay. okay. I appreciate you looking at that. But I just was wondering because, you know, we just went through this, you rewrote that section of the, uh, worked on the rewriting of that section 129 and it's still in there, you know, about no excavations and stuff like that under in the 75 foot, so. Uh, thank, okay. thank you, Howard, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I make a motion to close this public hearing. Are we are we expecting then uh, new plans with potentially the propane move? Is that what we're, where we're at? Or what, where uh, I, I'm I trying to think. It's just going to. I think I would just make it a condition similar to the town board. Just make it a condition of of the app, of approval. Okay. That's something we can close the public meeting. So I make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Um, I just want to make a quick statement. Um, we have late today received two applications uh, regarding the Ramshead Inn and the Bennett property, adjoining Bennett property. Uh, we are not going to discuss them in, in any way tonight, just in case someone's out there expecting these to be discussed. So, um, so the next application I must recuse myself from. It's for 58 Westmoreland Drive as I'm the project designer. And um, just so everyone is on the same page, it's freezing cold outside. I'm just going to sit in the foyer if that's okay with you guys. Sure, that's fine. All right. Thank you. Torrent. <laughs> Okay, Catherine, you want to read? Could you read the notice, please? A public hearing regarding an application for a wetlands permit by Catherine and Matthias Stitch. The property, which is the subject of the application, is located at 58 Westmoreland Drive, Shelter Island, New York. Yeah, it's a requesting a wetlands permit as required pursuant to Town Wetlands Code 129-2 to remove an existing swimming pool, pool equipment, patio, and tennis court, and construct a new swimming pool, concrete patio, and install a new IAOWTS septic system, circle class type two. Okay, thank you. Um, we got the CAC's report, and they had two things. They said, extend non-turf buffer to edge of dock to prevent runoff from grass to West Neck Bay and two, move pool to west and change deep end of pool to west to avoid the adjacent regulated buffer area. Okay. Um, Matt, you want to talk about this? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Matt Sherman, Sherman Engineering. I'm here on behalf of Katie and Matias Stitch, who are the property owners of um, uh, uh, 58 Westmoreland Drive. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, um, this, uh, uh, this property is on Westmoreland Drive, borders West Neck Bay, um, Westmoreland to the south, excuse me, West Neck Bay to the north. There's an existing single family dwelling. It's kind of a U-shaped building. And currently there's a swimming pool on the road side of the property between the two arms of the U. Um, there's an existing tennis court on the water side of the property where the septic system is. Septic system is underneath the tennis court. Um, New York State DEC limits of jurisdiction 
are this blue line here along where my pointer is. And the uh, wetlands boundary is down here, um, just, uh, uh, excuse me, right down along here, just seaward uh, or landward, excuse me, of the mean high tide line. Our 75 foot and 100 foot wetland setbacks, they just nick the uh, swim, the uh, tennis court that's just over the, um, just over that wetlands boundary. So we're gonna be removing as part of the application, 88 square feet of that tennis court from the adjacent regulated area. So our proposed plan is to put in a new IA septic system with the leaching galleys, coming up to the 100 foot setback. So they're 100 feet, uh, over 100 feet from the, the wetlands boundary. Um, a new swimming pool is gonna go in and that swimming pool is gonna be just under 84 feet from the wetlands boundary. There's gonna be 800, uh, excuse me, 481 square feet of that swimming pool will be within the regulated area. Um, so we're gonna have a proposed pool dry well, some proposed stormwater dry wells. The existing pool that's there now is gonna be abandoned, uh, taken out, and it's gonna be turned, just turned into a courtyard on the water side, on the road side of the house. The, um, there's an existing irrigation well on site, which has got a permit from the town and a 2,500 gallon precast cistern. We're gonna use that for a stormwater from roof and there's an overflow dry well for that cistern. Swimming pool, um, it's basically a 16 by 45 pool in a patio that's just under 30 by 70, a little spa off to the side of the pool. And there's an existing deck off of the house. So the pool and patio are set just off of that deck. We put a test hole in to see what, as with the other applications, what the soil conditions were and get a snapshot to see what we could expect for, um, for groundwater elevation. This is, these waterfront properties, a lot of times, more often than not, the groundwater is gonna be tidally influenced. So we look at the test hole as well as test holes and well data that we have on this property and a lot of properties around it to come up with an estimate for the highest expected groundwater. For most of this uh, uh, Westmoreland area, we know that groundwater is gonna be at about a one foot elevation. So, excuse me, based on that one foot groundwater elevation, we're coming up two feet to the bottom of the, uh, uh, at least two feet to the bottom of the swimming pool. In this case, we're at about three feet. <clears throat> excuse me. We got an automatic cover for the pool on the deep end. And the top of the pool elevation is going to be at about 13 foot, uh, 13 foot elevation. So a uh, simplified view of the uh, property, you've got your uh, side yard lines for the swimming pool, the setbacks of uh, 20 feet on either side. We have to stay 20 feet away from the leaching pool, so we can't move the pool to the west at all. Um, we're pretty much locked into the area where the pool is right now. The, um, we had looked at moving the pool underneath the uh, patio, you know, get it closer so that we could get it out of the, uh, um, get it out of the regulated area. But excuse me, what that would end up doing is putting the lion's share of the patio underneath the existing deck. And just from a usability standpoint, that just doesn't make any sense. Um, also, it's going to interfere with the, uh, uh, with the posts and the footings for the posts uh, holding up that existing deck. And it just creates a very awkward, uh, um, unnatural situation with where the pool and the patio are in relationship to the deck. Um, and one of the things that we had looked at with this is whether or not, you know, the, the town code says that in chapter 129, you can build in that first, in that 75 to 100 foot setback, the adjacent regulated area. Um, and, but you want to make sure that your other options, you don't have a better option that you're ignoring, or even a, a really good, vi a good viable option that you're ignoring somewhere else. Um, the idea of the pool being on the road side as it currently exists, it's less than 10 feet from the building on either side. Minimum standard, there's not a code standard for the minimum distance that a swimming pool should be from a building. The, uh, but the minimum recommended standard is at least 10 feet from the building. 
it's a safety issue as far as people coming in and out of the building, walking between the pool and the building, splash issues. Um, you know, uh, uh, somebody does a big cannonball and the water goes, it's going to hit the side of the building. Those kinds of things are reasons why they recommend that the pool not be put in that kind of condition as this one was current was originally constructed. Um, also, the uh, as far as the town permitting history is concerned, we've got several applications where uh, a swimming pool was allowed within the regulated area, even though there were other alternatives when those other alternatives were less than ideal. A couple of examples. Uh, this is one that was approved, a wetlands permit approved in April of 2021. Um, the uh, swimming pool was approved right here. This is the 75 foot setback. This is the 100 foot setback. Swimming pool was between the two of them. There's lots of other areas on this property that the pool could have gone. We didn't want to put them in other areas in this on this project because of trees and uh, other uh, other improvements, septic systems and things along those lines. This is also where there was an existing structure already. So there was minimal amount of damage to the site by putting the pool in this location. But the town agreed that you know having a pool within that 75 to 100 foot zone um, was not uh, was not an unreasonable request. Um, here's another one. This was um, March of 2022. The town board approved this swimming pool. Uh, again, within that adjacent regulated area, it could have gone to the west a little bit outside of the regulated area, but getting it closer to the house um, in a more usable, user-friendly uh, configuration, the town board said that that was a uh, again a reasonable request. And I'm not. I've got a whole bunch of these. I'm not going to go through all of them, but just uh, one, just to really kind of drive the point home. Um, this is a. I think it's a. 400 and something, 500 foot long piece of property. The swimming pool, there was an existing pool here on the water side of the uh, of the house. And this one's actually in the vegetated buffer. Um, it was removed and there's a patio that takes up the adjacent regulated area. The town board agreed that putting that pool back in with an increased area of patio within the vegetated buffer being on the water side of the property away from the existing patio made sense from the uh, from a usability standpoint on the property. And we're just asking that the planning board take that same consideration into mind when reviewing this application. Um, so that's, you know, this is a really fairly straightforward application, um, taking out the one pool, putting in the new, um, taking out the existing septic system, putting in the new IA system, um, adding some stormwater control, and that's pretty much it. So it's fairly uh, fairly straightforward. So if you have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer. Matt, I have a question. This is Julia. Yes, Julia. Um, tell me the amount of footage again that, that it goes over into the adjacent regulated area. The, the uh, uh, proposed pool, sorry. Just the 45 pool. by 16. 400 and let me see, hold on. A 480 400. square feet within the adjacent regulated adjacent. area. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't totally get what you're saying about, uh, obviously, uh, Matt and I went to the, we know the house, we went there, and the, the pool is in the middle of the, it's in the middle of the house. It's yeah. kind of, it's kind of odd looking. Um, but the way it is right now, of course, it's out of, it's out of the Unless. area entirely. It's out of the adjacent, it's out of the buffer. Is there, are, are there any alternatives to just, like I noticed it's a 16 by 45 pool, um, I'm just thinking of, of my own pool is slightly smaller than that, but I still get the good depth. Are, are, are there any alternatives to making that pool smaller? I do understand that you're saying that you disagree with the CAC's recommendation, but you can't really move it to the West because of the uh, other setbacks that you need. But how about just making it smaller? We could make it a little smaller, but it's not smaller enough to, small enough to get it out of the regulated area. There's so. Sense. You know, we're not, um, you know, we could, you could shave a couple of feet off of it. Absolutely. And, you know, that's true of any of these applications. Um, but you're not eliminating the need for a wetlands permit unless you're basically cutting it down to a, uh, a relatively small triangle. Just not have patio around it. Yeah. And, and on the water side, there is not really any patio around it. Um, on the landward side, there is. 
Um, you could have just, we could move it a little bit and have grass. Um, I think part of most swimming pools, you know, having a patio for lawn furniture and stuff like that at grade, you know, that, that's, that, that serves a, a functional purpose for the pool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I just I'm just trying to look at different ideas here to make sure that there's no way to, to get it to fit in there. Um, How big would the pool if it if it was just pool without? You could do a full sixteen by forty five, I assume, without being in. Without the patio. Without what? Without, without patio. patio. Um. Or yeah. Like so basically, have small yeah. patio on one side. Yeah, we could. You could. Well, the problem is we can't move the pool to the. We can't really move the pool to the west any. We could bring it to yeah. the south some. Um, so if we shrunk the pool and we reduced, then we eliminated the patio and re eliminated the spa, then yes, theoretically, we could get a pool between the deck and the um, and the hundred foot setback um, if we eliminated if, if we made all of those changes. Um, again, that's. You know, and I understand what you guys are saying, and I'm sure you understand where I'm coming from on this yeah, as well. Yeah. You know, if if we cut all of those different parts off of this project, it's uh, you know the property owner is no longer getting the benefit that they're seeking yep. for this yep. to yep. on the patio. It's running contrary to the previous town board determinations on similar circumstances. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. even not even worry about the town previous town boards. I mean, it's perfectly allowed to do construction right. in, the, in, 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 in that area. I'm just trying to understand yeah, what trade-offs were considered. The scale of the pool goes better with the size of the house. Uh, yeah, no, the I, tiny, I understand. Um, and and, like, and, and to, to the question of what trade-offs were considered initially, one of the first things we looked at was that um, one drawing I think I showed of the uh, pool pushed under up underneath so it was basically right at the edge of the patio, uh, the edge yep. of the deck, um, and the patio was underneath the deck. That was the first thing we looked at, and it, it, that you know raised a couple of bells for a number of different reasons. The ones I mentioned, you Oops, know, having yeah. the conflict Nobody with the existing rid of that deck, um, the usability of the patio. Um, you know, I, I think of the idea of my 21-year-old son standing on that deck looking into that pool. Um, you know, things along those lines. Those are all reasons why pushing that pool back out to the area that we're looking at it <laughs> made it for a very attractive alternative. Did they look at anything with changing the deck, the, the upper deck of the second floor of the house so that, I mean, like in this whole project, maybe changing the upper deck? Was that something that, that you played with or? It was not, not that I, any conversation that I had with them, I can speak with them and see if they were contemplating that. I know that the, the idea of, maintaining the majority of that existing building um that was you know that was part of the idea of um you know yeah. not not taking that deck out and putting a patio down there things along those lines to what degree they looked at different options uh, unfortunately i can't answer that all right um i think that's it for the any questions from the audience or did there is no audience we're glory to have there's a few. Well, we have Howard. 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 Yes. Howard. Howard. Uh, my question is what happened to the uh, vegetated buffer? Are we going to change that or not? The CAC recommended moving, adding red vegetative buffer towards the dock so we have less runoff. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I, that seems like something we could make. Seems reasonable. Yeah, we could do that. We can just we we we've got that input, Howard. And I think the idea is we take that once we close the public, we take that into consideration during our our review. But it seems reasonable. We need a plan for that. Yeah, we need a plan for it. As it stands right now, they yeah. just have turf. There's actually nothing there, and it does run right into the yeah, right into the water so. down by the dock. Yeah. That is that something you guys would consider? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's not a bad idea at all. I think, yeah, for runoff purposes, I think that's that's a very good idea. Thank you. No problem, Howard. Thank you. Lori, did you have any questions? On stitch. <laughs> Anyone else on Zoom? All right. We can close it. Close it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Close the public hearing. I'll second that. Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay. Bring the boss back in. <laughs> the chair. He's not the boss. 
Do you want to talk about it at all? Or? Well, I think we have, in theory, we go into the exec, we go into our thing, and then we'd have to, we'd go, we probably would think if we go into a, a working session, if we want to talk about it, yeah, we'd, we'd, have, about we'd, it. we'd make Ian leave again. <laughs> so hold out there, actually. Uh, so we closed that okay. one. So uh, that ends our business meeting and get into our work session at 9.05. Um, the first is the of current applications, the Bloom Minor Subdivision. Wow. And we extended that. extended that to July 11th. SH29 West Neck LLC. We just extended that to March 1st. White Roadway Construction, extended that to March 1st. And 60 on the Lord Road, they have until July 11th. Um, it came up mostly from the CAC that they are questioning the prints that are coming their way mm -hmm. and sizes. And I sent you around an email um, earlier. Um, and I know we had discussed this when we were putting together an application uh, a long time ago. Yeah. Yep. And so um, I think clarification, we can go through it again. Um, I'm cognizant of people who are not computer savvy, can't read PDFs on their phone, and also cognizant of an applicant who doesn't want to spend a thousand, two thousand dollars in prints and cut down a hundred trees to make the full submission. So, um, in speaking with the building department about denial letters, it is my understanding that um, it, the the denial letter is basically is based typically on the survey and site plan and rarely ever references the um, building plans. Um, the building department application requires a survey to be scaled at no more than 50 feet to an inch. And I think that we should at least, you know, receive at least copies in that same standard size. Is that Seem yeah. to make sense. It's reasonable. The yeah. site plan, full size. Everyone should have a full size site plan. What's nice about that is then we're seeing exactly the same thing they're seeing, which would be actually probably really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. And I think that's already that's already in a request uh, requirement. Um, I would say, and then and then the next thing is the DEC copies. Um, quite often the site plan is quite large. They have the little DEC stamp on it. Yeah. I'm happy with having one full size copy and then smaller copies for everyone. I don't yeah. think we need 15 copies of the DEC plan. No, as long as, as long as the primary person on it has a copy, I think we're mm -hmm. fine, Jay. Are you okay with eight and a half by 11? So you want to insist that the, uh, they are 11 by 17? I don't need to see so much from the I, I think eight by 11 is fine. I, as long as I have a PDF, I can zoom on my. The computer, okay. I'm fine. I, I I'm do fine. more digital. I mean, I have yeah. I like hard I, copy too for some. I things, look on. I, I'm, I'm on digital too, but uh, I like Howard that. and the CAC were struggling. They wanted full size plans of everything. But then perhaps the the compromise is one 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 full size, yeah. but, and that's kept in the clerk, or planning board clerk's office. Yep. So the other option would give them eleven by seventeens. It's not that yeah. well, a lot of us have eleven by seventeen in house. Um, but when you go to bigger scale, you have to send it out. I, I, is that where that, you, that seems fine? Yeah, I'm good with 11 by 17. And, okay. And the one, one big copy that we keep, we need it. Uh, same goes then with the health department, one full size. Mm -hmm. and, and again, insisting that any PDF we get is scalable. So that if I need to look at it or if Joe needs to look right. at it, you could just print out a copy. Mm -hmm you know, on our office machines. Yep. House plans. Um, we did find they're beneficial in previous applications. So, um, and typically they are submitted at quarter inch per um, scale, quarter scale. Um, but again, I don't really want a big bulk of papers. So I think one full size yeah. copy. Yeah, similar. Yeah. Then we don't really need to, you know, we're not an architectural. 
I think it's generally if if we come across something and we want to look at it, we can come in and look at it. Right? That's that's fine. I'm just thinking of Carpe, where the site plan, which is what Reed went off of for his denial letter, yeah. and then we started looking at the floor plans, and they had different different yeah. things, and that helped us out. Yes, agreed. So then, eleven by seventeens of the house plans would be okay. Yeah. The other option, do you sense you need them scalable? Do you guys break out a scale and measure them? I said, we have. Do you know how to use a scale? <laughs> I'm sorry, not to put anyone no, on no, the no. spot. Yeah. I, I just like to be able to expand stuff and look at it and get a general idea. I, I don't, okay. As long as, as long as it's expandable. I mean, I do a lot of my work digitally. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Um, and I have one hard copy at home that I, I do like more tangible thing. But The only thing I would say is if it's, what if it's a big lot? Like what if it's like a three acre lot? Yeah. Um, you know, you may want to have a bigger, you know what I'm saying? If you're looking at Danny Lord. Okay, I'm things. talking about for the house. No, yeah. The house. Oh, it's the house. Yeah. yeah. And generally, it's like this way. Do you guys break, carry these with you? Do you break them out and then measure ex precisely? No. Yes. No. So, I, use a, I use a computer. I measure on a computer. So the point is that we don't need eighth inch scale. No. no. We just need 11 by 17. Yeah. Right. That's where I was going. Yeah. Or the architect. Yeah, well, you're the architect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's why a skeletal PDF, if I really want to measure something that's like That's exactly right. Use my measuring tape. Um, on the screen? Hold it up to no, your I'll screen. The I, just, I just call Ian and say, Ian, how big is it? <laughs> uh, landscape, vegetation plan, I think the same thing. One full-size copy and then 11 by 17s. And the 11 by 17s, again, is a, trying to help the CAC out who's been struggling with 8.5 by 11. I've been fine with all the vegetative plants we've had before. Yeah. 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 Okay. Actually, some of them were really good. So. Yeah. And generally, they're scalable because they've done electronic. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So I will update our application for these few items. Really? Agreed. So, current wetlands applications, flowers. We've uh, not closed the hearing. We're going to discuss that further. Michael. Um, and Beth, I think a lot of these comments, I guess, are for you. I'm here. So, um, I think the, uh, I think the application was fine. Um, where's the, I think I printed out a list of, for you, um, do you have can I borrow that little spec, the thing I gave you? The oh, here it is. I got it. Criteria. So let's go through the criteria for permit issuance. The proposed action and location will not risk or uh, create a risk of impairing the function and value of the wetlands buffer. Um, I, it's bulkhead, a bulkheaded property. Um, there's going to be stormwater collection. Um, the sanitary system is being moved further away. I, I don't see that this is creating a risk of impairing the, the wetlands buffer. Mm -hmm. The proposed project will not diminish any wetlands in size unless the approving authority finds that the proposed activity is water dependent or requires access to the wetland as a central element of its basic function and will result in the minimum possible alteration or impairment of the wetlands. Um, if anything, only the removing sanitary system away, uh, really there's not much more activity in the vegetative buffer. There is work in the adjacent regulated area, um, but I don't think, I don't see anything else that would, they are really, they did a small, there's like a few square feet, right? But it's within, it's within yeah. 100 square feet. So. It's within, I'm scripting. The proposed project will not have an, a negative impact on the quality, quantity and quality of the groundwater. I think if the water's being recharged and they're putting in an IA sanitary system, the pool bottom's being kept uh, up out of the, out of the uh, groundwater, so I don't see any issues. The proposed project will not create a net increase in the risk of runoff. Uh, stormwater is being collect and collected and recharged to the decrease in runoff. Decrease in runoff. The applicant has demonstrated that there are no practical alternatives which allow the project to be constructed outside the regulated area. 
practical alternatives are presumed to, presumed to be available unless the applicant clearly demonstrates otherwise. Small property. That is a tiny <laughs> property, and it's actually a smaller uh, scope than what was previously uh, approved. Uh, and then last, the applicant has submitted information to describe alternative site locations and config to a configuration sufficient for a determination that the proposed work and location would have a less would have a less adverse environmental impact than any other practical alternative in order to for it to be approved. Um, I, I, there is no again, again. It's already less than what was previously approved. So no matter what, we are getting less. And I and I think it's you know you can travel. As far as um, then conditions, uh, obviously the automated pool cover, the cartridge filter. Um, I can't remember if this was a salt cell being offered or not. We have required salt cell in the past. I don't know if we should continue demanding on everyone. Not everyone likes salt cell. Yeah, um, it was not a salt cell, I don't believe, but we didn't discuss it. I don't think it's... So uh, um, I think just the automated pool cover, pool and, cover. The key. Mm -hmm. and the cartridge filter. Cartridge filter. Yep, um, agreed. Previously, they, uh, the previous approval uh, required a, um, a low flow, five gallon a minute um, well. Um, that area has salt intrusion issues. Mm -hmm. and so I think uh, requiring the five gallon a minute uh, well would be something. I agree. Yeah. We, um, we've done that with that. Uh, the yeah. yeah, same, same thing. thing we do in all these areas, but there's so the way we know there's little issues. The other thing that I've seen come up um, in in an application that I started talking to Marcus about is hot water recirculation in a house. Mm -hmm. Now it's a luxury feature, and people seem to like it, but it also saves a lot of water. You're living at one end of the house, and you. I want to take a shower and you turn the water on, you, you're draining a lot of water, throwing a lot of gallons out before you can actually use it. The hot water recirculator um, adds 1,500, 2,000 to a, a project, but allows one to instantly have hot water so they don't have to waste it. And you do have the ability to turn it off when you're not using the house. You throw a wall switch, it's actually a code requirement. So that's something I think you guys might want to consider. So it seems like a, it seems sort of like beyond the wetlands code issue, right? It seems like that's more like a, it's like- It's a water consumption issue. But it's, but the water, it's recirculating. I mean, yeah, we use a lot of water, but it's all just gonna basically go back into the ground and be recirculated. It's like- Hot water research is a, interior loop right between your hot water tank mm -hmm. and the faucet I have one in the yeah. okay but yeah, it's, it's not it's not dumping water in no but no he's saying, saying when you run the water to get the water conservation is the fact oh, that you're not it's yeah. going back into the yeah. it's going yeah. back into the so, okay. anyway the reason i brought it up was because uh there was a application on tar kettle a couple of years ago that mm -hmm. was required to have this it was um oh, really? it was a recycling construction project and they they were I, I think they were uh, did the co contracting they lived next Peter Reich lived yeah. next door yeah. and he was the one that brought it up as a water conservation uh, yeah. measure and, uh, and, and I think you know, in California we, we do it all the time because we have what well, we're drought problem drought conditions yeah. but to me it's like and actually I would love my house to have one uh, <laughs> but it's to me it's a the conservation is pretty minimal given the fact that it goes into our ground and then into our well and we water comes back. It's like, it's not that big of a deal here, I don't think, as, as, as it is in drought areas. I think the pump is more important than I agree. And I think, I think that's really interesting though, but I think that's something I recommend we make. Also, okay. also remember, just sorry to interrupt, but also just remember that your conditions need to be tied specifically to, the, to your relief requested. So what the so, applicant is asking for, how is what conditions you require mitigating those impacts of those structures that are being approved or whatnot? You know, yeah. how is it offsetting? And, and you, the board has to, you know, what's the nexus between 
the, the, the condition and the, the approval. So just when you're considering conditions, make sure you keep that in mind that it's gotta be tied to um, what the impacts are of what the structures that are being constructed are. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Seems like a nice to have. It um, is that something I threw out there? Yeah, no, I, I think it'd be cool if we should put it in code. <laughs> um, I'm looking at the previous um, condition list. Mm -hmm. um, LV, LPG tank relocated out of the 100 foot adjacent regulated area, auto cover, um, depth of pool to 6.5. They're doing it for. Uh, no dewatering during construction. I don't, <laughs> they're not going to do that. Um, I'd well, like the propane again. Propane tank, you can't move it. They no, they're going to look at. They're going to look at. Look at yeah. um, I do want to see the um, silt fencing towed in. It's right. not properly installed. Well, they're going to redo the silt fencing anyway, right? I don't think. But yes, it has to be towed in. Agreed. Um, concrete paths shall be replaced with pavers. They were said they may or may not look at that. Right now, they're all concrete. Yeah, they have. Yeah, currently, it's not part of the plan. I don't think for them to do anything with the with them. But they're still, you know, only expanding the hundred yeah. square feet. So um, low nitrogen uh, construction site might be clear of all trash and debris on a regular, you know, at least once a week. Parking and materials off off the street as possible. These are all standard things. That, you know, I don't know that we need to That's the construction permit to add. Uh, must repair damage to any public road street caused by construction value mm -hmm. on our per that vehicles. Seems, that seems unrelated to us by lands. It's like a um, land, project manager shall post a sign on the site with a cell phone number and shall address in a timely fashion neighbors' concerns regarding litter control, parking, noise. Uh, that's out of that's our building, building construction stuff, right? It's out of our program. Great. Uh, yeah. Dark sky compliance, uh, noise controls. Um, these are, yeah, these all seem outside of the wetlands. Building. That's because the town board used to do, go beyond just the wetlands. Yeah. They'd add broader things. Okay, so I, um, Beth, I think we're talking about the cartridge filter, auto pool cover, the low flow um, well. Uh, and moving the LPG tank out of the 100 feet. Yeah. Okay. That all sounds good. Okay. Um, are you guys going to talk about the next one? Do I walk out of the room again? Do we do a motion or anything on that? To say that's what we want to do. We're going to approve 10 No, no, no this is just we're asking uh, Beth to draft the draft motion. Right. Um, okay. That's in order. It's been a while. It's been like a month. So, <laughs> are you guys going to discuss? Try to walk out? Yeah, yeah we, we probably should. Do this right. Yeah. Is there anything else I want to? Is there anything else after that, or is that the last one? Yeah, there's another application. Yeah, there's a new application. He gets a break. I think we're not going to be able to do it tonight. Uh, All right. So you guys looked at this, right? Yeah. yeah. And to me, it looks pretty straightforward. I mean, there's nothing. Well, we had the, trying to figure out we had the same that... we had the same concern that the CAC had initially. Mm -hmm. um, we thought you know if we could move the pool closer to the house mm -hmm. away from the from the wetlands we'll more. The wetlands in time. We could, but if uh, right. they, they, having having had that discussion with Matt, yeah. I was taking a look at it, we thought too about moving it towards towards the. Towards Actually, the we west. We wanted to move it west, and we, we wanted to move to west as well. But, but we can't do that with the new IA system there. Right. Yeah. So you right. can't. And there's no place else for the IA. So they're also putting it where that goes is we take it. They take the tennis court out. So the you yeah, know, tennis court's yeah. out. That's gone. Yeah. And so I mean, if if it's within their right, um, if we can't find a better place to put it, to put that portion of it in the 75 foot. And, yeah, 100. percent And bringing it closer to the um, past does get in the, in the. I don't like it when you open a door and you go right into. Well, the, you yep, know, my, I actually have. I actually have my house is like this, where, I mean, and, and basically the pool is right here, and there is not the patio. Right. It is. I think so. I always tell the kids like anybody comes over, it's like don't you dare and not jump off because that's you could. It's, vacation it's, stuff yeah, like it's dangerous. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, that's but can I just add that if that if they did do that, 
that's the building department and there are safety yeah. features that go in and all that. So that's not think, really yeah. so important. We can't think of that's that's not it. Yeah. But. but I think where where we got stuck, I just wanted to rule out any other possibilities in size. Yeah. And I think the issue is the septic going on that west side, which I throws agree. everything off. Yeah, that's the um, mm -hmm. I don't want I mean that's a very valuable thing to have the IA, so I don't I can't say, well, you're not going to put the IA in it. And, and we've, yeah. we've approved many things yes. in the 70, in that right. So it's, like, it's like, if you can't find another place for it, then it's like, you're allowed to construct there. Right. Yeah. You are, but I was trying to get it even out of that. Well, we were looking at that. <laughs> we, were, we were trying to do, do you know, of course, make the best decision possible. Um, but that's why we have people like Matt to tell us, right. you know, how that thing, you know, yeah. where things they, go. They, the rules and are. the fact that they actually looked at options was good to see. I think that the vegetative buffer being uh, grown over and moved over uh, closer yes. to the dock to control the runoff from that lawn because it's all long right down yeah. Yeah. right down the desk. a bigger issue yeah um, that would be the condition down to West Neck Bay yeah um, and I think that's I think that is is important the runoff is just a big a huge problem we can speak some of that I actually think it would kill two birds with one stone that some of the uh, when 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 we went there there was a lot of wildlife coming up. Yeah, the, yeah the geese, the geese. The vegetative were... buffer is actually going to solve two oh, problems. Oh, really? A lot of oh, wildlife oh. coming up, so I think that'll keep things because they don't. They, they generally avoid barriers like natural barriers. Yeah. Um, there's no fencing there, for example, right now. There's not. Yeah. It's just lawn right to the sand right under the dock. Yeah. Yeah. And it does slope considerably. Yeah. yeah. So I think they should submit like vegetative. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. I think so. So I would think. What we'd say is we would, do we want to go, do we want to, are we waiting for anything from them on this one? No. So the only thing is if we were going to go with taking out the spa, making the pool smaller, putting it closer to the, the decking, maybe modifying the patio, if we insisted on that, Matt was going to, Matt would have to do another. But, but we haven't. At the close of the meeting, we didn't say we wanted, no. we, there's no outside. The record's closed. Yeah, that's what I thought. So my thought is, do we want to go through the same list that we just went through the last one about just to go through and say what would be the conditions that we want to make to put on the prop? You know, Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's the next step. Well, let's see what we have here. The proposed action and location will not create a risk of impairing the function and value of the wetlands and buffer. Um, no, but there's nothing in the in the vegetative buffer. In the it's very similar to the last one, which is there's nothing actually in the vegetative buffer right. at all yeah. in this one. Yeah. And if we do put a condition to to improve the right. turf, the, the, then that would actually be a positive. Uh, the proposed project will not diminish any wetlands in size unless the improving authority finds that the proposed activity is water dependent or requires access to the wetland as a central element of its basic function and will result in the minimum possible altercation, alteration. alteration or impairment of the wetlands. Yeah, nothing in the vegetative buffer itself. No. no. Uh, the proposed project will not have a negative impact on the, qual the, the, the quantity and quality of groundwater. That seems like again improvement. They're they're, they're adding yeah, a bunch okay. with the IA and with the stormwater runoff. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, and, and we're and, taking out the tennis court, which is covering the existing septic. Yeah. Which if they had a problem with the septic, that's going to be an issue with oh, access. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, tennis. Yeah, this happens a lot though in some of those older properties. Things are built over other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody plays tennis. Anymore. Uh, 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 they're putting in the IA. So. Yeah, yeah, that's the big thing. Uh, yeah. the, the proposed project will not create a net increase in the risk of runoff. No, the net decrease. If we require that that buffer to, to grow out, well, it'll even, even the buffer, but also just the fact they've got stormwater. Stormwater and also the tennis court's going to be gone. So. Yep. Yep. yep, all that's better. That's um, an improvement. The applicant has demonstrated that there are no practicable alternatives which allow the project to be constructed outside the regulated right. area. Uh, practicable That's alternatives are presumed to be available unless the applicant clearly demonstrates otherwise in making this determination. Note that the planning board generally finds that conducting the proposed regulated activity on the side or landward side of the house is highly preferred to uh, conducting it within the regulated area. Well, like we said, you know, if he moves it 
Yeah, you can't move it to the West. You can't move it to the West because of the septic system. You can't move it towards us because it can become right. dangerous. Um, yeah, you if they left it where it is, it'd be great, but we gotta find a balance and of all the right places. Yeah. 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 Um, the applicant has submitted information to describe alternative site locations and configurations sufficient for a uh, determination that the proposed work and location would have a less adverse environmental impact than any other practicable alternative in order for it to be approved. Practicable, I hate that word, <laughs> alternatives that are constructed entirely outside the vegetative buffer are, are presumed to have less adverse impacts on the wetlands than projects that do not meet such standards unless the applicant clearly demonstrates otherwise. Well, we already demonstrated I that. I think that was satisfying. You know, his discussion there about moving the pool made perfect sense. Yeah, and then the only other option is move west, and then you have the septic problem. So yeah. it seems like, again, they did look at it, which was, again, I think uh, Matt has learned that he has to show options. Right. They considered them and, yeah. and what the trade offs are. I did yeah. notice that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all learn. I think the, other, the, only other, the only other options are basically a diminishment of the size, pretty dramatic diminishment of the size, and or no patio, which is sort of like, again, well, it's, 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 you know, I think, it, like I said, it goes well with the scale of the house. Yeah. You put in like a tiny pool next to a big house. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. kind of like, I mean, I personally would love to see nothing in that area, so I'm, I'm not like entirely happy with it, but um, I'm willing to compromise on this because, as he said, it's 480. Yeah, and I do kind of see what you're saying about if you cut out the spa and you made it like a really tiny pool, it may fit barely, but it's going to look, it is going to be like quite a, odd. Like a cheap and, person lives there, you know? It's like a cheap person. Well, it's not that. It's a, it's it's the. Oh, I get it. I, I get it. I, I think it's the lesser. I think it's the lesser of the two evils. Right? We get all the other things. We get the IAA. We get the yep. runoff. We do a condition, then improve the turf runoff. I think that's of course yeah. not really great either for. No. Um, also, uh, they have an existing cistern. Yes. And uh, a, a permitted um, irrigation, irrigation system. system. So that's a plus. They're going to be using that to. Yep. Yeah, Matt put that in the presentation, if you recall. So that's already built in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is that is that the last one? Yes. That's it. Oh, uh, okay. can I just ask you, um, on the pool? Are we doing the automatic pool cover? Yes. Yeah. They have need to have that in there, they? I thought it was. I remember seeing it. Just somebody check. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll double check. I, I remember us talking. About it. Be sure. Uh, if not, make sure that's it. If not, let's add it as a condition. Yeah. We can do what we want. Pretty standard now. Let's yeah. And that is a square, that's a rectangular pool. Yeah. Utilizing that automatic cover on the swimming pool is significantly, yes, it's in there. It's in there? Okay. It's in the, it's in the uh, application. All right. That's it. So, uh, it, so it sounds like uh, that the vegetative we're talking about, uh, the con only condition we're talking about additionally is the the vegetative, vegetative buffer, the vegetative across, buffer. Yeah, across the end of the yeah. yard. Yeah. yeah. I think that's now, it. Do you, want, do you want them to submit a plan prior to yes. the building? Yes. You can look at it. And is there any specific width or like is it up to a they certain should, point? Uh, they should use uh, the town list. Our no, not, 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 not the, the width. width. He's talking about the oh, width. Oh, the width. Sorry, I thought you said list. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> We're not landscape artists, so I would say proposal from a you know a yeah. landscape person who understands runoff issues right. between Matt and uh, and their landscaper. They can come back and tell us what it does. Joe, are you still there? Joe, are you still on? Are you awake? <laughs> he wasn't feeling well. Yeah, I know he's feeling ill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hey, Joe. Do you have any recommendation or thoughts on vegetative buffer on a for runoffs? Um, Sorry to put you on the spot. Think, yeah. Um, is there a rule of thumb see at a all? A fifty-foot buffer. Is that pretty normal? It's bigger than what's there now. Yeah, I was gonna say. There's nothing there. Well, it's a non turf buffer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, you know, if they. Oh, you know, fifty feet is that's a pretty. Okay, yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. And, and there is an existing one. How about buffer can just be allowed to just no longer maintain it? 
so if it's it's lawn don't you know don't fertilize it don't mow it and just let it naturally uh, succeed to uh, a, a natural vegetative buffer right but we need to we need to give them guidance to as to because there's a very there's a good sized lawn and they're we're not asking them to do the whole thing we just need to do a strip of it between the, the actual grass and the water so it looks like there's a existing non-turf yeah there is there is some there's some they kind of i think what the cac was saying if you let that grow over yeah. maybe there's currently a fema flood line right there Okay. And if we just said along that line and just that makes you, we want all of that. Well, I have a choice and you know, give them a choice whether, you know, put new plantings or let it grow naturally. Yeah. Well, we got to give them a, we got to give them a border. We got to give them like, we want it to be up to here. Well, if you don't want 50, what, what do you want? I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Well, you can have them just submit something and then yeah. you can just yeah. sign off on it or say, no, it needs to be a little bit more or something okay. like that. Let's, let's do that. Let's do that. See what their recommendation. Right. They get the idea, right? Right. A we want a natural. I think the main point is we want a natural buffer across the entire yeah. uh, dimension. You know, right. yeah. across the entire property line. Because right now it isn't. Yeah. yeah. I'll let okay. you come up with wonderful words for that, Beth. I'm sure you can figure that out. <laughs> I'm absolutely. <laughs> you get the gist. Okay. That. Yes. It's okay. Cool. Ian. <laughs> Is that? Oh, that's not it. So there's one more. Yeah. And then we probably need to talk about who's going to do the test right, which I think that's what we want to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Want to talk about test row? I assume. So, um, Joe prepared a memo for Tesoro. Yeah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And um, I looked at the plans in addition. And um, ready? I I don't understand. There's a couple things I, I don't understand, and maybe uh, Matt can uh, talk to this. Just, um, I just got this today. Joe, Joe, um, do you feel up to just very briefly explaining your memo? Um, I don't want to put you on the spot if you're not feeling well. No, no, that that's fine. Um, all right, th this is another very difficult uh, lot. Okay. Um, it's triangular shaped. There's not a uh, there's not a, a great deal of uh, upland area from the upland edge of wetlands and and the site has been uh developed over time and what they're proposing to do is um, is replace an existing sanitary system that is uh, not up to standards with an i a system um, the thing is you know, even with the IA system, um, they only have about a, a little over 11 feet of separation between the edge of the leaching pool and the upland edge of wetlands. Um, so, you know, there is there definitely is a benefit to having an IA system. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it's just a tough site to work in. And uh, the other thing, uh, they do have a health department approval, um, but for, for some reason, no grading has been shown um, on how they're going to actually install the system. Um, the profile that was provided on the health department plans show, showed an elevation of seven feet um, over the sanitary leaching pools. Now, health department requires uh, that, the, that the slope from the edge of the leaching pools for a distance of 20 feet does not exceed 5%. Right. 
Right. So it just seems Oof. it's going to be tricky to get that sanitary system in there. I think a little bit more information would be needed. It would be nice to have some uh, some grading, a, a grading plan, see how that's going to be shoehorned in there. Um, so anyway, that's the one of the major uh, questions that I have as far as this goes. And the, the road elevation is at 11 feet, and obviously the creek would be zero. And I see the FEMA flood zones were put on the plan, but I don't see any topographic information which would help us and which will be needed to develop a grading plan. The other thing, um, the health department typically requires leaching pools to be 100 feet back. And here they're 13 feet. Uh, they require 150 foot separation between well and sanitary system. And here they're 108 feet. Was there a variance that went through? And maybe Matt can answer this one for us. Was there a uh, yeah, variance? We, yeah, we got a variance. We got a variance for this. The the biggest thing here is the existing system is basically in groundwater and it's absurdly undersized so you know basically it, it turned into a far from perfect but much better than the status quo scenario that's kind of that's what, what the, the health department and the dec basically ended up uh, agreeing on did the health department put any res uh, conditions on this is there something like you, you could share us the variance uh, uh yeah variance I'll, I'll get paperwork? That, yeah i'll get you that information yeah or at least the plan that they is there an approved plan that might show some grading in that area? Um, no, what you, you've got the approved plan as part of the application package. Um, I've also got some topo um, with spot elevation, so I can add that to the uh, add that to the map. The um, the elevation at the top of that little dock, the the like the that landward step, um, is at a five foot elevation, and okay. the house itself is at eleven. So. You know, that's where we came up with that seven foot was basically, you know, uh, um, evening out that that area between the um, between that that wood dock and the uh, and the finished floor of the house. Yeah, it's I, I think I, you know, I, I, I measured the the distance between the closest sanitary leaching pool and that five foot elevation. And it's it's less than 20 feet that you're dropping yeah. it. You know, you're dropping two feet in less than 20. Well, yeah, and we got a variance because you just can't fit it otherwise. Um, yeah. So, you know, the, the health department, like I said, health department and DEC both agreed that, uh, again, far from perfect, but much better than what's there now. Okay. Uh, if you could provide that additional information from yeah, the health yeah. department, it would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hi, right, Matt. So if we get that, then we can set the public hearing next month for March. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll get that over to you as soon as I can. Okay. You want to sign? Oh yeah. Who wants? Who wants to do this one? <laughs> Here we come. The current list. I'll do it. Okay. Okay, as I mentioned every month, we have two uh, special permit applications. They're both on hold. Five Winter <laughs> Road and one Pandian Road. Uh, anyone, Lori, do you have any comments for us? Anyone on Zoom have any comments for the planning board? Questions? Um, okay. And can we just go back to that wetland application again? So, um, okay. So, yeah. so I was wondering, and, and, you know, the board was just dealing with the a, a vegetation a vegetated buffer. Oh, is that I have to wait, 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 wait. Don't go. No, 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 buffer no, 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 Joe, you got to wait for Ian to leave. He has to recuse himself on that one. So one oh, no, second. No, no, no. This is. No, no. Oh, Tesoro? Uh, oh, Tesoro? Oh, yeah. oh. oh, sorry. We thought you were talking about the other one. No. Nope. Sorry. Oh, Go okay. ahead, Joe. Sorry, Joe. 
Go. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, there's a, a note on the map that says existing vegetation to remain, no new buffer plantings proposed. Well, quite a bit of, you know, we're probably talking about a thousand square feet in the area of the sanitary system that's going to be disturbed. Um, and, you know, it's got to be replanted in some way. If it's, mm -hmm. if it's a, a, a lawn area now, then maybe it could be something more natural. And um, the, the other question that I had had to do with the approximate sand area. And Matt, maybe you know you can shed some light. What is that? What is that? So Matt, on your site plan, um, there's this sandy area uh, with a yeah. ring in the middle of it. Do you, do you it's, it's just as as it sounds. It's you know someone at some point had brought in some sand and made a little sand like um, you know call it a sandbox without borders if you want to. It's basically just an area where they brought in sand so they could put their toes in the sand and put a little fire in a fire pit and and hang out. That's basically what it is. Um, the uh, the uh, box. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. Deer box. Because uh, Joe mentioned the Zion Hammer survey, and so I was wondering if it's if if it's new. Um, um, but you're, you're calling it is existing. Yeah, but I'd I'm have to look at I'd have to look at aerial photos and see when it went in. I'm not off the top of my head. I don't know whether that went in when when the survey was done or not. Okay. Yeah, because it's only about three feet off of the wetlands. Yeah. Yep. So I, I guess we'll need some kind of landscaping plan, a little more definition. That could be part of your grading plan to say yeah, what's absolutely. going back. And um, then we'll take it from there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. Thanks. Okay. All right. So, um, I make a motion to end the January 16th planning board meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. I, like it, so. I just got a 